um, very short training on creative online teaching for student engagement. So this will be uh, part two, uh, part two uh, to what we have had before. Yeah. So we actually had a part one on January 16. Um, so this will be uh, part two of the training. Yeah. So the, the what if those of you who have uh, not joined part one, um, what we actually covered in part one is on the usage of Microsoft Teams, um, collaborating online using Microsoft Teams, right? And we also covered on OneNote, Microsoft OneNote, and we also covered on Microsoft Suite. Um, so these are the three uh, key modules that we covered in part one. And uh, part two today, um, we will be covering, okay, I will show you the session outline a little bit later on, yeah? So a uh, very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for agreeing to participate and uh, participating. I know we all are very busy in the middle of uh, marking our assignments and um, preparing the exam scores and all this. And uh, despite this um, whole hassle of uh, preparation and you all are here to journey with me for this whole morning. So uh, thank you very much. So I believe this workshop uh, is until 10 o'clock morning to 4 p.m. Yeah, all right. So are you all ready for the whole day? Are you all, are you all ready for the whole day? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, lah. the workshop is not until 4 p.m. Huh? The workshop is until 1 p.m. Huh? So hopefully I didn't give some of you a surprise. OK, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think some of you I might be checking. changed the time already. <laughs> some of you might be checking again, thinking, oops, you know, did I sign up until 4 p.m.? <laughs> okay, so the workshop is until 1, yeah? Okay, so I will encourage all of you um, as we go on for this workshop, uh, please, uh, as much as possible, uh, try to dial in using either your laptop or your tablet or your computer. And uh, much of this session today will be a lot on hands on, a lot of hands on activities here. Yeah? So I, I will not uh, just be talking. Uh, we will be doing a lot of hands on. So I will introduce you to uh, many, many tools that we can use in our classrooms and um, for you to experiment that tools yourself, for you to actually use that tools yourself and discover it and see how we can modify, how we can adapt it um, according to your own course requirements that you are teaching. Yeah? So if you are dialing in using a mobile, uh, please as much as possible try to exit and dial in using a tablet, uh, a computer or a laptop. All right. OK, so let's start uh, this morning. So a little bit of uh, introduction about myself. Uh, before I go on further, I believe you all can see the full slide, right? Uh, yes, we can see. OK, yes, yes. so OK, thank you. Thank you for the response. OK, so before I go on further, <clears throat> uh, just a little bit of introduction. Um, I was um, certified. No, sorry, what a bad grammar. I'm certified by my Microsoft. Yeah, uh, um, so these are some of the certification that I've got uh, from Microsoft. So you will see this a uh, nice tiny little badges here. Uh, this is actually a physical badge and they give you a physical badge um, the, and you get this badge once you have completed the modules from Microsoft. So there are four main modules that you will need to complete for you to get that big black badge. Um, so you need to con con complete a Microsoft PowerPoint, um, Access, um, Word and also Excel. So the, the Access here, Microsoft Access is actually optional. You, there are a few other uh, modules you can choose um, uh, for the for the only for the access option, huh? but the three compulsory one is PowerPoint, Word and Excel. Uh, these are the three uh, main ones compulsory. The access one is optional. You can choose other modules that you feel necessary. And each of these has an online exam. So you have to go through a two days, full days training. And um, um, after that, you have to sit for an online assessment. Um, your computer screen will be locked and the exam will be given and administered by Microsoft and invigilated by an appointed uh, person. So if you pass that one, then you will get the necessary certificate such as this. So you will get a badge as well as you will get uh, a certificate such as this. So each of the uh, modules you get a certificate um, is a very nice certificate. You, you really like it because why? 
the 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 labels that you see here the uh, i don't know what you call it emblem is it uh, this emblem is actually gold plated um, um, so it's, it's actually very shining huh? they will post it to your house um, so this is the scanned copy so each of the modules that you have completed you will get a, a cert and you will get a master cert so this is a microsoft office specialist master and if you notice on the right you have all the modules that you have completed and if you notice at the bottom, you also have a verification code. So if you were to go to this website, you will have a verification code. So you can actually verify whether the person's name in this cert is actually truly certified by Microsoft. So if you would like to sit for this kind of module, so you like to take the exam, each module is about 800 ringgit, uh, um, six to 800 ringgit per module. OK, uh, but last time UM used to, I think uh, 2000, uh, 2019, UM used to have this uh, course um, uh, administered by the PTM. Yeah? So they used to run this course and I took this course during that time. It's about 250 per module uh, so because they have a voucher from Microsoft. Yeah? But I, as far as I understand, they no longer have the voucher as expired. But you can please feel free to check. Yeah? Um, if you need more information on this, I can also provide you uh, if you want to take it outside. Yeah. OK, so as part of the certification also as well, um, I'm also a Microsoft um, certified uh, innovative educator. Yeah? Um, so if you are interested in this certification, please let me know. Um, this is a little bit more easier to achieve, uh, much more e achievable. Uh, you will have to complete few modules and sit uh, for a simple test a quiz. And then uh, if you pass it, then you will get this uh, certified MIE. Yeah? But it's much more achievable compared to the other four certificates, uh, sorry, five certificates that I showed you earlier. All right, um, so a little bit of session outline uh, for today. So this is the topics that we will be looking for. Uh, we will be covering for the whole day um, until one today. So we'll be looking at um, creating authentic assessments. We are going to look at how do we uh, do a flipped classroom using Microsoft Forms. So what is Microsoft Forms? Microsoft Forms is something that is very similar to our Google Form. Uh, those of us who have used Google Form, you would have heard about, uh, you, you you will be familiar with Microsoft Forms. Yeah, um, Just the interface is a, a little bit different, but the style and the, the usage is very much the same. Right. So we will be looking at how to use um, Microsoft Form for assessments and um, how to do a flip classroom. We will also look at uh, how do we build a collaborative classroom with Office 365. So among the common applications that we use is Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel, right? But how do we use this three software uh, to make it a really collaborative classroom? OK, what am I talking about? Uh, we will experiment this later on. Yeah, so I will actually invite all of you. We will do this hands on together. And of course, the last part will be the exciting part which is uh, us experimenting uh, with many collaboration tools and how to rate, uh, make our classroom really dynamic and really interesting. So whatever I'm going to share with you um, this whole morning until one is uh, through my own experience of using it and also applying it in my classroom. And um, uh, how do I know whether it works, what works, and how do I know whether uh, uh, these are some of the best practices? I actually asked my students at the end of the class, uh, at the end of the semester, to give me a reflection. And many of them have commented and give a lot of testimony in terms of um, how interesting the class is and you know how engaged they are and the time of three hours just passed by. Right, so we utilize the whole three hours of the class and it just passed by. Right, so I can. Um, so this, uh, I'm just sharing with you some of the experiences that I have done in my class, and hopefully through this uh, sharing, you will be apply. You'll be able to apply in your respective courses. Yeah, I am in no means claiming to be an expert in creative teaching, and I definitely in no way claim to be. A, a creative teacher. Lah. So I, I don't see myself as a creative teacher. It's just that I have came across few tools and strategies on how to make a classroom really engaging. OK, so just to let you all know, lah, some, there's some disclaimer. Lah. I'm not a, a certified creative teacher or something. Yeah, Just sharing a best practice. OK, so before we move on, um, I would like um, all of you to help me to complete this pre-session survey. Right. So the, the link is there in the slide and also the QR code is there. Uh, so please um, scan the QR code 
and complete this survey. This survey is a, a very simple survey, probably takes about two minutes of your time. Uh, so please help me to complete this survey. Um, I will show you the results now live so that uh, one of the reason of doing this survey is to help me gouge, to help me evaluate in what percentage and what weightage should I continue with the workshop today because um, most of you have not met you before and I need to know your familiarity and your competency with some of the tools that we'll be discussing in this workshop, right? So by you answering this survey, it will help me balance the weightage, which part of the workshop that I should give more attention to, right? So if you're already familiar with something, then maybe I'll give lesser attention to that part. Okay, so please help to complete this. It's about only two minutes, yeah? And I will share with you the survey results. Okay, so you can scan the QR code um, to access it through your mobile. Alternatively, I will also put the link here in the chat box. Okay, it's a little bit big, but never mind. It's clickable. Um, so you can click the link in the chat box for your convenience and complete it. Otherwise, you can also complete it through your mobile. Okay, so I have about, wow, close to 50 of us online now. Huh? Wow, all right. Okay, I have four responses so far, five. Okay, we are coming to 10 now. Hi, Husayri. <laughs> Okay, 14, 15. Okay, we have just touched 20. So we have close to 50, yeah, close to 50. Wow, already, yeah, close to 50 now. So if all of you can please help to complete this so that we get at least a feel of everyone's um, expectations yeah, of this workshop. So I see some familiar names with us who have joined the workshop before. Any of our lecturers here who have joined the part one, can you please put in the chat? Um, the part one workshop that we held in, in, in January. Anyone, anyone has come for the part one workshop? Maybe you can put in the chat. See some familiar names here. Yes, okay. Dr. Yoon has come yeah, for part one. Okay. Uh, Liana has come also as well. Yeah, okay, Dr. Louis. Oh, all right. Nice to see you here, Dr. Louis. All right. Join part one. Okay, let me check. 25, yeah? How about the rest? Can please complete that survey? We only have 25. Uh, we are coming to yep, 30 now. Hi, Dr. Earl. Nice to see you again.
Okay, we are at 31. Okay, we are at 32 now, 33. So let's um, go through these uh, results together. Yeah, I will show you all uh, what is the results like. Okay, we are at 35. Another 14 more. Another, not 14 more, another 12 more. Here, minus Umu and Hussain. Okay, 37. Okay, we are stuck at 37, yeah? Wonder what happened to the rest. Okay, let's go on. Um, okay, 37 will be more or less a representative of the whole group today, yeah? Um, let's go on and see, all right? Um, all right, so... Let's see what describe your overall knowledge on Microsoft Office uh, 365. So I can see that um, most of you all are in the beginner stage. And uh, almost half of you all, uh, I mean, it's almost a balance, yeah, half to half. yeah. So uh, we have intermediate users here and we have beginners users. We also have few uh, one advanced user. yeah. So how frequent do you use the following applications? All right, so a good news is that um, quite a number have used Teams here, all right? One has probably, one has never used Teams, all right? Now Forms, we can see that uh, some of you have had experience using Microsoft Forms, all right? And Whiteboard, most of you has not used Whiteboard, um, Flipgrid, Kahoot also surprisingly yeah, um, is almost an even spread. Okay, and then we have Padlet, and then you have Quizzes, and then Add Puzzle, Classroom Screen, Jamboard, Collaborate. Wow. So all the later parts are all the critical errors, yeah. Okay, so right, so how frequent have you used? So please rate your interest in learning more about the following application. All right, so Teams, Forms, or oh, Teams so higher. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you all want to learn about Teams today. Uh, um, uh, okay, if I got time, I'll try to cover. Uh, otherwise, uh, this will be the last the last part, yeah? Uh, because it's not part of our training today, yeah, Teams. Okay, and then you have Forms, uh, Whiteboard, Flipgrid, Kahoot, okay, Kahoot, all right, Padlet, quizzes, okay, classroom, okay. All right, so what some other application have you used online? Um, so you have Google Meet. Okay, so some other applications, Poly Streams, right, Spectrum, okay. Uh, Spectrum, not really taught online much, experience, limited experience, huh? experience limited to using LMS. Google Classroom, Meet. Zoom, Google Meet, Socrative, yes, these are other applications, WooClap, Google Forms, Zoom, Only Spectrum, Google Meet, Padek, yes, another application. Um, that's, okay, Teams, WhatsApp, Forms, Google Forms, Meet, Survey, Monkey, okay, so these are other platforms, yeah, um, similar to Microsoft Forms. Okay, Classmaker, Quizlet, only, only the above, Google Meet, Zoom, Google Docs, Spreadsheet, Education Website, Provide Games, Nearport. Okay, nice. 
and then one node, Trello, nice, and then Quizlet, and then Mentimeter. Okay, so these are some of the other applications yeah, that you all have used online. So we can see, yeah, we can see that um, what are the sort of uh, applications that uh, you have used frequently, yeah, and then we can see that um, uh, the later part of these applications are not really used that much. Yeah? Um, so let's go through today on using these applications. Yeah? Uh, so these applications will be covered in the workshop today. What you see um, is what we will be covering today's workshop. Yeah? So I, I, from this survey that you have helped to complete, I can more or less try to balance the contents for this workshop uh, this morning. Yeah? OK, I think I see some in the chat. Um, I'm sorry, got something, can't make it, we'll join another day. Okay, sure, no problem, uh, Dr. Tan. I think I joined part one, the one on Microsoft Teams, yeah? Yes, uh, Asli, uh, yes, the part one is on Microsoft Teams, yeah? We covered on Microsoft Teams. All right, let me just continue uh, with my slides. Okay, so thank you for doing the uh, pre-session survey. All right, so now, um, these are the applications that we will be covering um, this morning in terms of uh, Microsoft 365. Yeah? Okay, so we will be covering on forms, uh, we'll be covering on PowerPoint, we're looking at Excel, we're looking at Word, and we are looking at Whiteboard. Okay, so these are some of the um, applications that we will be covering this morning. So as you can see in your um, uh, Microsoft 365 portal, these are all the applications that you have access to, right? Um, in your 365, all these applications you can use and you have access to in 365 applications, okay? So please do uh, experiment on it, uh, take time to experiment on it, okay? But uh, this morning we'll be covering on these applications. Huh? Part one, we covered on um, other areas. For example, OneNote, we covered on Teams and we covered on Microsoft Suite. All right, so what are some of the main features of Office 365? So I uh, come to understand that some of our lecturers here this morning are uh, new, yeah, new um, to our profession. Um, so you're maybe not very familiar with this Office 365. So I will give you some details and also uh, for the reference of all our lecturers this morning, I will also share the slides to all of you, yeah, so you can also um, use it as your own reference, yeah. So what are the main features for Office 365? Okay, so uh, firstly, you have five licenses. Um, every Office 365 that we have, uh, the account that we have, we have a total of five licenses. And these five licenses can be installed in uh, your tablets, you can install in your smartphone, you can install in your last, uh, laptop, desktop, your, you know. So all these uh, devices um, are available for you to install the five licenses. Yeah. So I will strongly uh, discourage um, to share these licenses. So sometimes when we buy this uh, machine, when we buy a computer or we buy a, a, a laptop from the uh, shop, uh, the first thing that they will do is try to sell the Microsoft um, Office um, software to you, uh, which is cost about 300 plus. Uh, and you don't have to buy that because we already have access to Office 365, right? So you just have to install the Office 365 into your device. Yeah? So you don't have to buy the Office 365 that is offered by the um, computer shop. You already have access. So both staff and students um, have access. OK, you have two types of access. You One, you can install physically in your machines. Another one is you can um, have it online through the cloud, uh, which we will show you later. So these are the main things that usually that we use Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and uh, OneNote is uh, an interesting app to use for teaching and learning. Yeah? Um, so you also have access to Outlook Online. Outlook Online is an email that um, uh, that we use, but Outlook Online uh, we, in UM, we don't really use it because we have our own UM mail, uh, which is uh, based on a Google platform. So we don't really use Outlook Online, but you have access here. Yeah? So if you want to click Outlook Online, you can click here. OK, so uh, this is the Microsoft Outlook. Yeah, uh, where is this? Is it here? I think somewhere down. Actually, there's more, much more applications. Huh? Is I just captured here. Uh, later, we will. I will show you. Yeah, in your Microsoft 365. So you can go to your Microsoft Outlook, and also you have access to OneDrive. OneDrive, you have a storage of one terabyte. Huh? So please try to make make use of this. Yeah, very very big large space. 
So take advantage of the one terabyte one drive storage. And since it's a cloud based technology, PTM is not responsible for any document backup. So please always back up your work. Uh, this is quite important. Yeah. So what are some of the elig eligibility and terms? All staff and students have access to this through your UM mail and students here have CISWA mail. And you can use this plan until you graduate or no longer enroll or employed at UM. So it's a continuous thing. Eh? So again, definitely know to share uh, the Office 365. Why is no, uh, why you can't share? Uh, for example, you have five license. I only use one license, and then maybe in another four, I sell it or I give it to people. I don't encourage that because why? Your software is actually registered under your name. So if they use it, uh, your name appears in the application. So if there's any misuse of that application, then you will be in trouble because why your name is registered to the software. So try uh, not try. Please do not share your Office 365 licenses to anyone here. Yeah? And then uh, for the information, you can click this link. I will share the slides here. And uh, any problem, please feel free to log in using our UM help desk. OK, so for staffs, how do you access Office 365? This will be the link. Um, you will want to bookmark this, all right? This is the link for you to log in. Um, sign in using your account. So username uh, is similar to our uh, UM mail. Eh? Only difference is you add the word 365. So ours is usually Donny Adams at um.edu.my. This time we add the word 365, okay? Uh, here, so th this is the only difference. Password is the same password how you, you access your UM mail. For students, it's the same link as well. Uh, you will want to give them this uh, link for them to use it and then sign into their account. Um, the only difference is they have the word 365. So usually it's siswa.um.edu.my, but in this case for Office 365, they have siswa365, same password as their siswa mail. So this is how we access. Yeah. So you might want to bookmark this link and uh, um, share these details to your students yeah, um, so that they are very familiar how to access Office 365. Okay. So we are going to go into Microsoft Forms. Um, any questions at this juncture? OK, Dr. Lee says I use Outlook app on all my day because I find your email clunky since I cannot use two Gmail accounts at once. OK, so some some experience sharing. Huh? OK, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. All right, Aina, no. OK, uh, any other questions on Microsoft 365, how to access and all this? before we go into forms no okay so please don't worry i will share with you that slides huh, with all the details huh? so please share it with your um, students so that they are familiar okay now we are going to go into microsoft forms uh, before that let me just share a short video with you oops sorry uh, OK, let's watch a, a short video on Microsoft Forms.
that's a little bit of overview on Microsoft Forms. Yeah? So I hope that you are excited to learn on Microsoft Forms. Okay, so let me see the chat. Uh, okay, can more than one person work on the same form? Example with group work. Can one student do one section of the form and do uh, and another do another section? Um, okay, Dr. Helena, uh, at this moment, this functionality is not one that I'm aware of um, because at the moment uh, you can share the forms and other people can access. You can share the form as a template and people can modify the template. But um, is if both of them were to join and work on it at the same time is uh, to my best knowledge is not possible at the moment. Yeah. Um, so Dr. Salima, is it similar with Google Forms? Yes and no. Um, yes, it's very uh, the usability and the purpose is very much similar. Uh, no, because it's very unique uh, compared to Google Forms. It has its own unique features, yeah, uh, which I will show you. All right, so let's dive in and let's go into uh, Microsoft Forms, yeah. Okay, so the first thing you need is um, you you will need this link, yeah. Okay, before that, so. Uh, before we go into Microsoft Forms, so as you see from the video earlier, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to create surveys, quiz, we can do polls, okay, and you can also see results as they come in, okay, and when you create a quiz or survey, you can invite others, uh, you share the link, your students uh, can uh, access it and complete the quiz using a web browser or on their devices, okay, and uh, what are we going to look for this morning, what are we going to learn this morning? We are going to see how Microsoft Forms can help us create formative and summative assessment. We are also going to uh, understand how we can share and how we can duplicate Microsoft Forms to collaborate with colleagues. All right. And also another one that we will learn this morning on Microsoft Forms is how to use forms um, for flip classroom. Right. So this is our learning outcome for this morning. So let's first dive in into Microsoft um, Office online. Yeah. So I'm going to share this link in the chat. If you're not really familiar with uh, 365, I'm going to put into the chat. So you can click um, that chat, uh, the link in the chat, and it will lead you to Office uh, 365. OK, so in this case, I, I, I'm already here. I, I already have entered my username and my password. So if you're a first time user, it will ask you for your username and password. So if it's your username and password, so you have to put similar to your UM mail, but just put 365. All right, and then the password is similar to our UM mail password. OK, so I will encourage all of you to let's do it together. Yeah, so you have a, li a little bit of hands on experience. There's a little bit of buzzing sound in this meeting. Uh, let me see who is. Let me try to mute. OK, it sounds like some radio transmission. Huh? OK, never mind. All right, so let's go to Microsoft Office 365. Now, those of us who are new um, in Office 365, OK, first thing that um, I'd like to highlight to all of you, um, I told you earlier about five licenses, right? So you can install up to five licenses up to um, in five devices. So how do you <coughs> install uh, the licenses physically in your machine? Um, you have to go to here. You see this nice button called Install Office. So if you click this, all right, and then you click Office 365 apps. So if you click this, it will install into your computer. So sometimes it's not very pleasant uh, when we see lecturers uh, when they, they present or when they use all uh, their documents. Uh, we see the, the, the word on top here, you know, uh, uh, your document name on top here is written unlicensed, unlicensed or not registered. So it's not very nice. It comes out a red bar, uh, so it doesn't really give a good image. So try to install the full version. This is what I mean by your name. Your name is appears in the document. So if you share your licenses, your name will appear. OK, so uh, don't share your licenses with others. Yeah. All right. So how do we access Microsoft Forms? You click this. Uh, I don't know what you call this. I just call it a grid. So you click this grid here. OK. And then it, this is the main apps in Office 365. If you want to see the rest of the apps, you will click all apps. So here 
you will notice that all the applications of Office 365 is here, right? So we are going to look for the application Forms, Microsoft Forms. So if you click Microsoft Forms, you will come to this part, Microsoft Forms. Now, Microsoft Forms, you have two functionalities. One, you have the quiz, okay? Another one, you have the uh, survey. So we are going to learn how to create a survey first, right? Using Microsoft Forms. So what do we do? You have to click this drop down button. Click this, new form, okay? So it is a drop, bump, drop down button. Click this, new form. So if I click new form, <coughs> it's going to come to this interface, okay? So now let's try to do a simple form using Microsoft form, yeah? Okay, so the first thing is you have to enter in your um, title, the title of your form. So what title? Maybe I want to enter uh, poetry assessment. Okay. Poetry assessment now gives a description of this uh, this poll. Okay, so maybe you want to write something instruction, yeah? So this poll is to see how much you have a how much you remember about poetry from the last class and to and to learn about your attitude towards poetry something like this lah okay so you give a description uh, to your students, yeah, to your students. Now I'm going to um, add some questions. So this is my title. This is the description. I'm going to add some questions. So click add new. All right. And when you click add new, you have various um, options here. Okay. So maybe the first thing that you will want to do is to add a text, add a text question. So I'm going to click text. Okay. So maybe the first thing that I want to do is maybe full name their full name, all right? And then now if you notice that once I click somewhere else, this box appears so they can start typing in here. Yeah? So maybe the next one I want to put in is another text box is their uh, metric number. So their student metric number, right? So once you're done, um, click elsewhere. But you will, one thing that you want to do is to make this uh, question compulsory to answer. Right, so that means that if they don't answer, they cannot move to question number two. So what can we do for this? Click this box and then click required. So you put this required means it's a compulsory question. So now when you click text, this is a small box, right? But let's say that if you give them a question and you they require a long answer, right? Uh, uh, maybe a paragraph, for example. So you might want to activate this long answer. So the box becomes bigger and they can type in more text, okay? Otherwise, then it's okay. Huh? If it's just a simple answer, you don't have to activate long answer. So maybe go number two, I'm going to put required. Now, if you see the difference is, um, once you put required, you see a, a red asterisk here, right? This one doesn't have because it's not a required question. So now I'm going to make it required. Now you notice there's two red asterisks here, okay? So full name, metric number. Okay, so what other questions that you want to add? Maybe now let's learn how to add choice multiple choice questions all right so i'm gonna click choice okay so now let's put a question okay uh, on choice so select the types of sample uh, sample uh, poems select the type of poems you have studied the last class Okay, so now you want to test them, huh? see whether they have remembered what they have learned from the last class. So uh, maybe answer number one, let's put um, lyrics. Okay, so maybe number two, let's add narrative. Okay, so now you only have two boxes, you can add on, yeah? You can add on, so click add option. Okay, so now you want to add on, uh, maybe I want to put sonnet. Okay, now let's add on another one and then haiku. So if you want the students to type an answer 
other than the answer you have given here, OK, you can click add other option. So if you click add other option here, uh, they are able to type uh, the answer here, right? So this is their answer. If you don't want, then you just click this dustbin here. It will remove. OK, so select the types of poem you studied. So this is a multiple choice. Yeah, so students will have to choose which is the correct option. All right, so now. Other than that, we are going to also add a text. OK, now we have added two text here. OK, so now we're going to add another uh, type of question called rating. Rating. So text we have already done. Yeah, full name and metric number. This is the choice. Now we're going to do rating. So if you click rating, OK, so now in rating question, um, you can actually ask them to rate from the highest to the lowest. All right, so let's do this and I will explain a little bit more. Yeah, so maybe the first question is I feel um, comfortable. I feel comfortable um, writing poetry. OK, oops, very wrong spelling. OK, I feel comfortable writing poetry. Now you have an option of selecting what is the comfort level. That means from uh, one to five or you can even be one to ten, right? So maybe I'm going to leave it to one to five and you can change it so they can rate it according to stars. OK, uh, this one which Google form doesn't have. Yeah, so this is some of the unique features. They can rate it according to stars. Otherwise, they can also rate it according to the numbers. So this will be uh, one that they are um, much familiar with. Yeah, so you can put I feel writing poetry. So one means what? So maybe you want to put a description here. Um, one is um, strongly disagree. Then maybe five strongly agree. So now your students will be familiar. What is one means and then what is five? OK, so here um, you can put in the rating skills. So this is how. Otherwise, if you don't want this number, you can even change it to star, right? Star. So star is much more easier to understand. Lah. Then you don't need this Likert skill. All right. So um, I will usually use the star, all right? Because it's something that is a little bit unique for uh, Microsoft form. All right, so this is how we create a very simple form, right? So you we have practiced how to do choice, text, rating, right? OK, so now now what I'm going to do is this is how um, it looks like when we click preview. So if you click preview, this is how your form looks like to the students. Yeah, so if they open it in a computer, this is how it looks like. So this is where they can type their name. OK, for example, the metric number, then they can select the, the, the types of poems they have studied and then I feel comfortable writing poetry. So what what is the uh, comfort level they are? So this is for computer. Now, if they open it in their mobile, um, you can also see how it looks like in their mobile. So you have computer, you have mobile. OK, so this is another new. Uh, this is another additional feature that form has uh, that is not accessible using Google. Yeah, so this is how it looks like with mobile. So if I click mobile, this is how it looks like. So earlier uh, I gave you a graphic on uh, pre session survey, right? So this is the, the graphic that I use, right? So this this nice phone thing, right? And your whole survey is over here. OK, so if they were to answer this survey in their phone, um, this is how it looks like in their Phone. Now, this is a little bit boring. Uh, you can even change the theme, right? So if you don't want this standard uh, green color, you can even change the theme. Yeah. So how do I change the theme? OK, just click theme. All right. Now you have many types of theme here. So if you can choose all the types of theme, so which one, uh, which of this theme that suits you the best? OK, so maybe um, I will want uh, maybe this theme. Uh, because it's something that is arts. Eh? OK, so now you can notice that the theme and the background has changed. Now I'm going to click preview. So this is how it looks like. So now the bar is blue. OK, and then you have a nice background. OK, and then if they were to open it in mobile, OK, it's going to look something like this. OK, the color has 
change. So this is how we do a simple um, uh, form, uh, uh, a poll or a survey using Microsoft form. Okay, so this is how we use the, uh, enter in the text. This is how we do the multiple choice and this is how we do the um, rating scale. But please bear in mind that when we do this multiple choice, uh, number three, when we do multiple choice, let's say if it's more than one answer, uh, more than one answer. If it's one answer, then it's OK. This present format, it's fine. But if it's more than one answer, you have to activate this multiple answer, multiple answer. So they activate this means that it has more than one answer so that when you do this uh, survey later, they can click multiple answers. Otherwise, it's only going to be one choice they can click. OK, so this is the basics, lah, the basics. And then if you want to add a picture uh, to this poetry, you can also add a picture. So click this insert image. Um, you can insert the image from your computer. If you have an image already on this, you can upload, click upload. OK, and then select the files that you want from your computer. OK, here. Otherwise, you can even search for the image. So maybe let me search on poetry here. So this is on Bing. Eh? Bing is actually a search engine similar to Google. Only thing is um, Google search engine is under Google. Bing is under Microsoft. OK, so Bing poetry. So let me try to search and see what other pictures comes out. OK, so some nice pictures is coming out. So maybe I want to click this picture and click add. All right, so when I click the picture and I click add, something is loading here. OK, so now you have the picture inserted here. So now let's go to preview. This is how it looks like. OK, with the picture. Now if you go to mobile, this is how it looks like. OK, this is how we can um, uh, insert a picture into Google Forms as well and change the theme. All right, so we have concluded um, just the first part of Microsoft Forms. OK, do you all have any questions on this? This is how we create a simple poll and survey using Microsoft Forms. Yes, um, add. Uh, um, what is this? Huh? Hmm, some questions in the form here. Um, can we categorize students answers by tutorial group? OK, and then yes, you can categorize uh, Dr. Aisha. Is there a limit? to the length of the long answer? No, uh, no, no limit, Dr. Helena. If it's a long answer, they can type yeah? no particular limit. How to separate a test using different sections parts? For example, section A, uh, part one, part two, and then section B. OK, this one, uh, a test, yeah? a test. So I later I will show you uh, when we go to the quiz. Yeah? Um, what is this? Uh, I, Limit shown in Microsoft Tech yeah, Support. Sorry, um, Dr. Donny, I, I searched this before and it says there is a limit of characters though for long answers. Um, 4,000 characters, is it? Yeah, I mean, it, okay. it's quite long, but um, it's almost unlimited, but yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure, but maybe you can check. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. okay. Thank you, thank you. So here, uh, Dr. Shina says she found online 4,000. So 4,000 is actually quite a long, <laughs> quite a long answer. La. But Very yeah. Long uh, answer, yeah. Yeah, but um, here it says that there is a limit, lah. All right, but uh, four thousand characters. So I, it, it depends. I, I don't think that your long answer is going to reach four thousand. Four thousand is actually quite a lot. Okay, and then uh, click on the drop down. Yep, click on the drop down button after dates, and you will find section. Okay, so Dr. Lee has responded. Thanks. Appears to work similarly to Google Forms. Yeah. Is the application the same for quiz too? Okay, we will look into quiz. Ah, what I just showed you is the polls and survey. OK, can be separate name as not part of the question? Yes, you can do this. Yeah, uh, if you don't want uh, your student's name and metric number as part of the questions, you can also do that. I will show you now. And can we add video and audio other than image? Yes, you can. Uh, uh, Dr. Asni, I will show you on that. Yeah? Um, we will be looking into how to create a flip classroom. OK, and I will show you on that. OK, upload video. What about inserting a picture for each question is a example sports test can how they send this form to students and can students access SharePoint? If so, use OneDrive to share. OK. Yes, you can also set the timer. Yeah, OK, let's go to this. Yeah, All right. Let's go to Google form now to share the link. Is to click this. 
share. Okay, click the share button. Now this is how we share this link. But take note of this option, yeah. So you have anyone can respond. Only people in my organization can respond. Specific people in my organization can respond. So if you put specific people, you will have to enter in the email address of the people yeah? um, that only specific people can respond. OK, but if only people in my organization can respond, then um, you select this, you share this link to them. So one of the questions that our lecturers asked us now, um, can I not put the full name? and metric number as part of the um, form. Yes, you can remove this, but please ensure this option is enabled, right? Only people in my organization can respond and this, and your student must have a Microsoft 365 account. Okay, if they don't have it, then they cannot access this form because here it's written only people in my organization. So means what? They have to access using their 365 account. They cannot be using their Google Mail, Yahoo Mail or any other email, only the 365 account. So if this option is enabled and you share with your students this link, they access this form after they have logged in the Microsoft 365. So they, when you share this link, they will need to log in to your 365 like how we did earlier. Put a username, put a password and then when they answer this form, then it means their responses, it will capture their name and their metric number, okay? Uh, sorry, not their metric number, their name. Their name will be captured there, all right? So you can safely remove these two options, okay? Um, if your students, you want them to access only using 365 account, all right? So this is on share, yeah? Okay, so if you like to share this template, you created this as a template to your colleagues, you can also share. So share as a template, get a link to duplicate. So let's say if another lecturer is teaching the course, they you don't want uh, they don't want to create a new form. You can share this to them. Huh? Uh, it's not that they can access. They will get a copy and they can modify accordingly. And when they modify, it doesn't affect yours. All right. And then you here you can also share to um, collaborate here. All right. So this is where they can modify at the same time. All right. So here is on the share. OK, and then here you have a few other options. If you want to print the form and all this you can print. Yeah. Okay, what other questions that I miss here? Okay, can we set the timer? Okay, uh, this one, uh, Dr. Louis, when we do the quiz, I will show you on this part, yeah? All right, um, okay, how to share, I've already uh, showed. Okay, how about inserting a picture for each question? Okay, so if you go back to here, okay, now this question. Uh, select the types of poem you have studied in the last class. Now, this is just a question. Now, if you want to, um, Put a picture as part of this question, you can. So click this one, insert media, insert media, right? So now you can have both image and video, image and video. So now maybe I'm going to click image, then now you can put uh, uh, whatever image that you're comfortable. Okay, maybe this one. Lah. Okay, add. So now select the type of point you studied in the last class. You will see that the image is loading. So you can even add an image here and you can also add a video, right? Um, it depends on your choice. So now if you click preview, you can see that a picture is added here and that the question is here and then your students can answer, all right? And you can also add a video, yeah? Using that um, same option, yeah? Okay, I think that I've answered most of the question. Okay, any other questions you all have on this? Um, I'm gonna show you the next part which is uh, creating, uh, we're going to look into quiz after this. Any other questions you all have on this? No, thank you. All right. Oh, but one thing, I'm sorry, I'm not done. I'm just, I'm just sharing for the um, uh, allowing only organization, sort of yeah. like students with uh, within the organization to answer. That became a very big, um, for me, at least, it was a quite a problem because most students actually um, logged in with their non-365 ID. So I think that was that. Uh, so I always kept the name and the trick number as part of my question just in case. Ah, so yeah. thank you. A lot of them cannot access the even the form or the quiz if they log in uh, with an ID which is not 365. Yeah. Yeah. 
So thank you for sharing, Dr. Sheena. Yeah. So that is one of the experience, uh, uh, Dr. Sheena shared. So um, some of them are not very familiar. So if you are in a in a classroom and you can guide them slowly, you're not rushing for any particular time. Then you can slowly guide them on how to access because not everyone is uh, perhaps familiar with it. Yeah. But if it's going to be a formal assessment and um, they needed to do it on the spot and you don't have time to actually guide it. Uh, guide them, then I will suggest to not activate this option. OK, share, don't activate this option. So what option? This one. Anyone can respond. So that means if they don't have a 365 account, also they can respond. So click anyone can respond. All right. And then you share this link to them. Right. So when you share this link, they can respond. So now you can respond. That's why you have your full name and metric number so that you capture their information here. Right, but if you put this uh, forms will capture only their name. All right, but like as what Dr. Shina says, you might face some technical problem. Right, so I will usually um, use anyone can respond. Right, and just put a full name and metric number here. It's after all for your convenience. OK, so now uh, maybe you would like to try. Just try and come into forms and see. I'm sharing the link here. OK, in the in the in the chat, so maybe try to answer. Once you try to answer, we will see some responses. Just just uh, random, no need to put the exact name or whatnot. Just some random thing. Try to answer and then we will see some responses here. So now at the moment, if you click responses, you can see there's no responses and all this. Yeah, so if some of you have answered, then we can see. OK, so one person has answered. OK, two, very nice, three. OK, so now you can see. Yeah, <coughs> uh, this is something that is a bit unique compared to Google Form. Um, first, you can see the number of responses and then what is the average time to complete? Uh, so you will know how long is your survey? What is the average time to complete? And similarly to Google Form, you can also open in Excel. You can also um, export it in Excel. So now you can see that, OK, this is their full name. Uh, you have 13 responses. OK, so latest responses are this. Now if you want full details, just click the full details here. You can see. OK, this is their responses. All this is here. All right. And then if you want to see the metric number, you click this. This is all this. This is just a visual part. Lah. If you want to export into Excel, it will be a similar thing. So select the types of poems you have studied. So you can hover over your mouse. You can see what is the number and percentage similar to um, Google form. So this is how we see the um, um, responses uh, using Microsoft form. So when you use uh, this option, anyone can respond. You will notice that you didn't face any problem, right? You didn't face any problem. But now if I were to switch this or so to any only people in my, I don't expect you to face any problem because um, unless you have not logged into 365 before. So I don't expect you to face any problem either um, using this option. OK, so this is all about um, doing a simple survey using uh, Microsoft Forms. All right, any any questions on this uh, before we move on to a second part of Forms? As Dr. Asni asked about audio. Huh? OK, Dr. Asni, you can maybe experiment on this. Um, here you have, uh, okay, let me just throw this. Here you have image and video on option only. Yeah? Uh, they don't really have an MP3, um, um, MP, uh, MP3 option, an uh, audio option here. They only have these two option here. Okay, so unless your video, another, another option you can do is uh, perhaps, uh, oh, just <laughs> okay. Poor Nasani. So maybe you you, you have uh, uh, or, uh, you're talking something. You can record it into MP4 and then you can put it there. Uh, so maybe you just have a black screen. Uh, that is fine. You can try that uh, method as well. Okay, let's go to uh, second part of Microsoft Forms. So let's click this um, grid here. Okay, and then we are going to click Forms. OK, so now we have come back to the main interface. Yeah, so earlier what we did is we click this drop down. We had new form. Now we are going to click new quiz. So this now this option is to create survey and polls, right? 
Now we are going to create new quiz. New quiz. So click new quiz. Okay, so now um, we are going to uh, create a quiz for our class. So how do we create a quiz for our class? So first let's put it a title. Okay, so uh, what title that you want to give? Uh, maybe let me put a class quiz for uh, French poems. See, uh, example, uh, example. So now this is the title. Now maybe you want to add a description. Uh, here, students, please answer the following Are, uh, five questions all together. Example. Now you can even add a image. So maybe let's put French poems. Lah. French poems and see what comes out. Okay, got some pictures here. Huh? All these pictures here. Okay, lah, maybe let's, let's just add this one. Lah. Okay, so now we add a picture. Class quiz for French poems. Okay, now you have a, a nice. Wait, wait, it's not support. Let's try another picture. Okay, so you put a description here. Dear students, please answer. Okay, now you see the question is um, successfully loaded here. Okay, there are five questions altogether. So now let's add new. So now if you add new, let's uh, first add job. <coughs> Let's first add choice, yeah, uh, multiple choice. So click multiple choice. Okay, so now um, you want to add some questions to um, your students, yeah. Okay, so maybe the ooh, poems we discuss in our course. What is the what is the two poems we discussed in our course. Okay, so maybe now you give them an option. Okay, so maybe um, lyrics. Okay, now I'm going to add uh, sonnets. So add option. Uh, what is that? Some more narrative. Okay, and then maybe another option. Haiku. Haiku. Okay, so now you will notice that um, there is these two extra funny buttons here compared to the survey that we did, right? So here you will notice that there is this like a text icon here. What is this? Yeah, if you click this, um, you will able to give your student a message if they have answered this question. OK, so let's see if lyrics is the right answer. So please tick this. OK, means this is the correct answer. OK, so now if the student has answered this, then you can put a message. Well done. OK, so now let's see if this one, this is not the correct answer. So don't click this. Huh? Don't click this. Otherwise, you have multiple correct answers. Huh? You only click this unless you have two or three correct answers. OK, so now um, this one is not the correct answer. I'm not going to click this, but I'm going to leave a message. So this message is for students who answered sonnets. Huh? That means it's a wrong answer. Uh, uh, so maybe you want to leave a message. Uh, 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 what is the please uh, please refer to the course outline for example uh, course outline okay uh, wrong or inaccurate okay please refer to the course outline because you're asking them what is the two poems uh? so narrative so this is how you can leave you can even leave this is optional it's not it's not a compulsory thing right so if you want to leave a, a feedback like this you can okay it's not a compulsory thing so this is how we do it yeah so don't forget to click a correct answer so now if you see uh, um, for the you uh, for us designing the forms you can see which is the correct answer so the green tick means this is the correct answer right so now we have designed this question now don't forget you might want to put this as a required question. That means they have to answer this question. Yeah? Otherwise, they might skip this. All right. And 
you want to assign some points. So here you can assign some points to them. So maybe if they answer this question correctly, I'm going to give them two points. Uh, if they answer this question correctly, right? So Microsoft Forms will automatically compute for you the total points for the whole um, for the whole um, class uh, once they have already completed this. Okay, points and then make it a required. So this is how we create a, a choice question. Okay, next one is, okay, now let me see. Next one is we want to create a ranking question. Okay, so go to here. Create a ranking question. Okay, add new. Here. Ranking. So click ranking. Okay, so ranking question. What are we going to do? Okay, so maybe um, we're going to put an example, uh, example of a ranking question. Uh. Uh, please. Uh, uh, which which of the following uh, not not which la, uh, maybe rank rank the following applications according to its popularity okay so now rank the following uh, microsoft applications microsoft 365 applications according to its popularity. So maybe now I'm going to put teams. I'm making a lot of spelling errors now. Okay, teams, sway, okay, uh, maybe forms. Okay, now um, I'm going to add maybe outlook. Okay, this one, if if you have taught them, lah, you gave them some statistics and you know the answer for the, uh, this is I'm just showing you some example, yeah? Okay, so you will notice that there is no correct answer, yeah? So what is so different about this ranking question compared to what we have done, uh, the choice? Now, if you go to preview, all right, um, you will notice that they will need to rank. They need to rank. So how are they going to rank? Is uh, basically they can either move top or bottom here, or they can simply just click and just move. So now, for example, I'm going to rank from number one, number two, number three, number four, right? So maybe I'm going to go number four first. Forms is rank number one. And then uh, Sway is number two. And then three, number four. So this is my answer as a student, right? One, two, three, four. But you as a, a teacher, this is your answer. So please set the answer correctly. So that means uh, if the student were to answer like this, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, they are going to get these points, okay? So set the points, maybe five points. Okay, maybe this is a little bit difficult. I'm going to give them five points. So the answer that you set here, see, set options in the correct order. When you share this quiz, options will appear in random order. So when you share this quiz, for example, this is Teams, Sway, Forms, Outlook. Now, if you share this uh, um, to your student, you see, it's already shuffled. So now they have to determine which comes number one, number two, number three, number four. But your answer is this. So now if I share the link to all of you, all of you will be getting a different option, something like this. You won't be getting the same answer. So now it's up to you as a student to rank it. So when you rank it, it comes out a number one, two, three, four. Or you can even move your answers here and the answer will go down. All right. So this is how it looks like in a computer. And this is how it looks like in a mobile. All right. So not much of a difference. Huh? Uh, compared to what we have uh, done in the polls, only the much difference is you have a ranking question here, okay? And the difference here is you are able to determine what is the correct answer. You have to you have to um, select what is the correct answer and also give the feedback, okay? Give a, um, a feedback uh, uh, according to the answer that we given, and you have points system here. All right. So this is how we create a simple um, assessment using uh, Microsoft form. So now you can even change the theme. So maybe I'm going to change the theme to this, make it something a little bit more nice. So you can see that it has changed. So you can add on as many questions as you want. Okay, so let me see. Uh, what is the question? Okay, uh, Susanna, 
what is this? We have to upload our own videos in Microsoft Stream first. Is that correct? Okay, Susanna, this one I will come to it later. Yeah, uh, this is on the Flip Classroom. Okay, uh, well, I'll come to it later. Are you talking about Flip Classroom, Susanna? Or are you talking about showing them a video and for them to answer here? Message response. Okay, this one I will show you. Yeah, uh, settings later. Thank you. Uh, net promoter score, uh, Dr. Lee, you can just um, ignore this. Uh, uh, it's not really a, a, a popular function. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I don't really, um, I'm not familiar with this myself. Okay, so I just suggest that you can ignore this. How to set timer? Okay, in the forms. Yeah, okay, let's go to here. Okay, so here, uh, what you're going to do is we're going to set. Okay, uh, let's respond to what. Uh, Susanna has answer. So now if you want to add a video, you click this insert media. You have image and video. So in each question, you can either add an image. You can either add a video. So in this case, I'm going to add a video. So now in the video, OK, you will notice that you have to paste the URL. So you have two compatibility here. One is Microsoft um, Stream. Another one is YouTube. So basically to answer your question, um, the video has to be placed in either Microsoft Stream or YouTube. That means you have to upload the video first. Then you share the URL of the video here. So when you share the URL of the video, it will appear as a video. And then uh, the video will appear here and then they can answer the question once they have watched the video. Okay, now on the sharing part, OK, this is how we 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 share something similar to what um, we have learned earlier. OK, now the only difference is, is this part. Yeah, so you have to decide which which one. If anyone can respond, then please put their full name and metric number. OK, otherwise you want them to log in using 365. This will be sufficient and forms will capture their name. OK, now if you click this one, more form settings. OK, now if you're going to go to settings, OK, click again. Huh? Click these three dots here. Click settings. OK, now you have uh, an option. Uh, uh, one of our lecturers asked, huh? uh, do they get to see the results automatically? Yeah? So immediately, that means they get to see the correct answers immediately after submitting the quiz. So if you want this, then you activate this. Yeah. Otherwise, then only if you don't want them to see the correct answers immediately. OK. Uh, then deactivate this. If the, you want the students to immediately see the correct answer, then leave this open. This is a default option. But you want the whole students to complete, you look through the answers, then later on you release the score to them and then for them to know whether what is right and wrong, then you deactivate this. Okay, so you will see the option here. Respondents will see their results after you have reviewed the answers manually. So that means after you review. Okay, if you click this option, Respondents will see their results and correct answers immediately after submitting the quiz. Right, so this is an option for you. Yeah. Now, who can fill up this form? OK, so here is where when we click share this now. You have these three options, right? So this one, the third option, you have to put in the email. Anyone can respond, anyone can respond, huh? but they won't capture the name. If you select this uh, option, only people in my organization can respond. Now, if you go to settings here, you will notice that who can fill out this form. If you select this option, only people in my organization can respond. The form will capture the name and only one response per person. OK, so options for responses. OK, you have some options. Then you can start date. You can end date. OK, and then you can even have the um, shuffle questions here. OK, so all questions or you can even lock questions here. All right, so this is some of the settings yeah, for Microsoft um, Forms. OK, timer, just a moment. Huh? Let me just check on the timer. I'll get back to you. Huh? Just give me one minute.
Oh, okay. Let me go back here. Uh, let me try this. Okay, this is on the timer part, yeah? So I'm going to put a start date, right? So this is the timer, yeah? So um, one of our lecturers asked about a timer. So if you want to acti activate timer, click start date. Okay, so this is the start date of the of the quiz. What is the date you want? Uh? So maybe uh, 16 today, lah. okay? And then 12 p.m., right? And then end date today, and maybe end the quiz at 12.30. So this is how we can set the um, timer for the forms. That means they only have within um, half an hour to complete. Okay, um, so I have some questions here. Mm, does this mean I have to make the uploaded video public? Uh, Susanna, yes, you will have to make it. You have to make sure that it's uh, public, yeah? Because um, it has to appear in forms, yeah? You have to make sure that it's in public, all right? And then what, wouldn't the associated video depend on who can see the form provided through the link? You can try the options, yeah. Um, I've not particularly tried on the private video, yeah. I've not tried that option. Most of the video that I have done is all public. Um, I've not tried on the private option. So if the video is private and whether it's accept accessible in uh, forms, I have not tried that. So maybe, um, Susanna, you can try that option. If you want it to be private, um, just upload it, put it into private and share the URL into the into the forms yeah and see how does that go otherwise please switch it to public okay uh, can we set many questions ask them to randomly choose five questions for students oh <laughs> uh, not possible uh, Dr. Wood I know this one uh, spectrum can do it yeah spectrum can do it quiz through spectrum we can do it uh, they call it question bank uh, but in Microsoft forms are not possible okay um, Okay, so Sheena has shared something in streams. You can change, yeah. So if it's, uh, you can change the settings in streams, yeah. Um, or you can try through YouTube. So that's why this whole ecosystem of 365 is linked together. Um, because Microsoft 365, you also have Microsoft Stream together. So if you can try to activate, I've not tried it myself, yeah. So please try. Uh, Dr. Sheena has um, gave some guideline there. You can try to put it into private and see. I, Think that should not be a problem, but most that I've done is public. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, Han, can anyone respond? Set to one response only. Yes. So in this case, uh, here, yeah. So in the settings here, only people in my organization can respond. Record name, one response per person. So that is for that option. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube has a private. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I will try to explore. Mm, okay, so Dr. Lee has shared something about YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so try. Uh, I will suggest that try to maintain within the ecosystem of 365, which is uh, Microsoft Stream. Microsoft Stream works very similarly to YouTube, yeah, where they can view and you can upload videos as well. So try to use the private function in team uh, in, in in streams. I don't dare to say can because I have not tried it myself. So usually the answers I give is something that I tried it myself. Okay, otherwise I don't dare to say can and then later on you try cannot, then it doesn't look very good. Lah. So I will only share what I have experienced personally. Okay, uh, and I've done it all the time through public. Okay, so please try it through private. Um, if it works, then yes, it's doable. So maybe I will try it myself also after this. Okay, um, all right. So this is on how to create a simple assessment using Microsoft Forms. Okay. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to um, learn how to create flip classroom, flip classroom. So this uh, one, Dr. I... Donnie, Dr. Donnie, yes, yes. Ask? OK, uh, actually, uh, I am Honey, the, the one who asked ah. about the if we if we said anyone can respond. Yeah. Can we set to limit to one respond only? Because the one that you showed just now is that we need to choose um, the one in the organizations. Yeah. But yep. if let's say, yeah, because because like my students, uh, most of them are using um, non-365 account. But okay. for quiz purposes, I only allow them to 
submit only one response. So I need to set um, anyone can respond, but then they can only answer one time. You can only submit one time. I cannot see the mm. uh, functions. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. set anyone can respond, I cannot see uh, anywhere I can choose to limit their response. Okay. Um, it's not so possible to do it. <laughs> it, it's not I, possible to do that. I did it many, many really? times. Yeah, I did it many times, and actually, I actually wrote to Microsoft to ask for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah but so far, they have not. Um, they have yeah. not sort of updated that. <laughs> so okay, what I, all right. what I how, did how do you do that then? Uh, what I did is I uh, what I did was I I informed my students and I gave the instructions. I said. Since I received the responses and it's time stamped, so at each response is actually time stamped. So yeah, whichever I that I receive first, yes, I will yes, yes, it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because if I, <laughs> okay. see a if I see a duplicate and it's at a later time, yeah. and I will not consider that as a um as a response. Yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, but I'm asking because I think in Google. We can do that in Google. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank right. you very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, in Google, yes, you can do that. Okay. But in, in Microsoft, uh, at the moment, not possible. Uh. Anyone can respond and limit to, to one, uh, not possible. Uh. But if I'm not mistaken, Google also, they, you will limit respond um, only possible if they sign in through their Google account. So I think that um, in this case, um, is also similar response. If they sign in through the Microsoft 365, you can only limit to one response um, at a time, right? But um, as what Dr. Sheena has suggested, I will uh, suggest to all uh, to you, uh, honey, to tell to your students that only the first response will be um, considered. And I think they should understand that. Yeah. I will do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have to try to maneuver around some limitations. Lah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So this is how to create a simple um, 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 assessment. Okay. Using forms. Now, um, as part of this uh, whole thing, also we can also um, create a flip classroom. You can also create a flip classroom using this approach. Yeah. So all you got to do is just click add new. Okay, and then uh, maybe let's add a, a, a text here. All right now, in this case, um, this text that I want to add here. Sorry, this is. Uh, let me delete this. Okay, so click a uh, text here. Okay, now I'm going to insert a video. Yeah, so click this, insert a video. So this video must be either in stream or YouTube. Okay. So maybe let me go to YouTube now. Okay, YouTube. Okay, now let's try to find something on uh, mediation. Okay, what is mediation? Okay, example. Uh. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the here. I'm going to paste it here. Eh? So now you will notice that a video comes out. Now I'm going to put a, a question. I'm going to put a question to the um, to the students, yeah. So this one is a question, but you can give like a uh, instruction to your students. So dear students, uh, is is view the video and answer the following questions. accordingly okay so now you give an instruction here now and enter your answer yeah so now they can enter so what is the correct answers here so they can enter their answer so now you give them for example this instruction now you can sorry you can ignore this part you can add new you can put multiple choice so now they're going to see the video okay they're going to see the video here and then you can add the question based on the video so now for example what is the what is uh, mediation? Okay, so maybe you can put um, uh, whatever answer lah A B C D. Okay, now when you click preview, you go to the bottom, so you can see that now the students will receive this. So this is an instruction. 
Dear students, if you want to put a points, you put a points. Otherwise, you can remove the points. So dear students, please view. So now you can see that the question is here. What is mediation? And then you have the question so for them to answer. So this is how we can do flip classroom. So when you clear this, you do a nice empty form. OK, and you put a video and then you put the question. Then it will be a very nice um, question for them. All right. So you can also do this option. Um, you can flip your classroom. I do a lot of flip classroom, especially at this thing, yeah? uh, especially at this time, uh, because why I notice that students at this, um, they actually prefer a lot of self uh, directed learning, right? So they, they like to view the videos, but of course not to just view the video and end the lesson. Um, view the video to test their understanding after your teaching. Right, so view the video and ask them to answer some question to test their understanding. Right, so you, maybe you can allocate some time uh, in your class to do a flip classroom type of learning. OK, so yes, um, uh, ask me no. Uh, can we shuffle just within a section only? Not possible. Uh, this option is not possible at the moment. Do UM students receive training on Office 365 as part of the required? I can see uh, no. At the moment, no, Dr. Lee, um, they don't receive training. The only training that they possibly receive is through their own lecturers, um, especially if they want to use Teams. So their own lecturers will have to show the students how to actually use Teams. But setting up Teams is a little bit difficult in the beginning, but once you set up, then um, in creating the Teams, adding the students into the group and all this, once it's already set up, uh, it's all good to go. OK, it's just that now it's a little bit difficult. Eh? Can we detect whether students have indeed uh, viewed the video? Uh, once they have answered the questions that you have given here, your responses here, yeah, responses here, it will show that they have answered the question. But in terms of detection of the video, I don't think that we can see whether they actually viewed the, the video. OK, the bad thing about an open link is that if I'm a hostile, if I'm a, I can basically set up multiple accounts to flood the system and crash the, the quiz down. Yes, uh, uh, that is a very possible thing. Dr. Lee, you brought up a very good point here. Uh, this is a possible thing about open link. Uh, but let's hope that it doesn't go to this extent. Uh, um, actually, any system is subject to security issues. OK, um, OK, yep, thank you. Based uh, Dr. Vinodini says yes, only shuffle the forms, not sections. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, you cannot track. Yeah, OK, and it's possible to link 365 or Teams with Spectrum. Yes, you can link. Uh, if you want to link 365 uh, with uh, Microsoft Teams and uh, Spectrum, you can link. Yeah? Because in Spectrum, you will have um, an option where there's a web option. So if you go to Spectrum, when you turn on editing, there is a range of tools there. You've got forums, you have quiz, you have uh, web there. So you can link, put the URL of these uh, forms into uh, the spectrum and then they can click that URL to link to the Microsoft forms. OK, can they review the video again before they answer the next question? Yes, yes, they can continuously view the video. Yeah, no problem. OK, um, that's it. This is all about uh, Microsoft forms. So we have done with Microsoft forms. Um, so we have covered on how to create a simple survey uh, polls we have covered on how to um, create a quiz. OK, and also we have covered on how to do a flip classroom using forms. OK, so any questions on this before we move on to the next part? OK, I, I'm taking questions as they come uh, in the text. So any other questions? I'm closing on forms already. We are going to move on to the next one. Uh, Dr. Donny, uh, yeah. I did uh, uh, ask about can you separate the name and metric number at the top so it's not be part of the questions? Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, oh, you mean uh, separate this one? Uh, yes, because uh, in the previous example, you gave like the name and metric number. Name is number one, metric number is number two. So it, it will be like part of the question. Can you like do like separately? Um, not you, in the questions number. You can, but uh, you can do it according to sections. Also, you so that section you can put it 
just the name and their metric number and then you have the forms there you can but otherwise you can just turn on within the organization also so you can okay. do that okay thank you okay okay so i think um, maybe after this if you have further questions on microsoft forms and all these no worries i will drop my email you can uh, email me and uh, maybe after this training, when you start doing on your own, actually doing, you will have some technical or you have further questions. So if you encounter that, please, I will drop my email after this training, then you can email me and then maybe we can talk more and I can try to solve um, the technical problems that you're facing, okay? So now is about 11.35. Can we break about 10 minutes? Uh, then we will come back and cover the next part of the workshop, okay? Just to stretch and... Uh, just break for about 10 minutes, yeah? Okay, everyone, uh, we are, we can continue, yeah? We can continue for the rest of this morning. So welcome back. <laughs> Hopefully that you all are back. All right. Uh, uh, to respond to one of our lecturers question earlier, yeah? Um, where is this question? Yeah, it's about the name. Yeah, about the name and the <coughs> about the name and the uh, um, metric number. Yeah, can you separate it? Yeah. So as what I mentioned, um, you can separate it. Okay, by creating sections. Yeah. So I've done an example here during the break. So for example, section one. Okay, you can put personal details, name, and metric number. So how does it look like? If I go to preview, this is how it looks like. So personal details, name, so they enter their name, okay, and then their metric number, okay, and then click next. So when they click next, they comes to the question. So you can separate according to section. So how do we uh, separate according to uh, sections? Click add new, drop down button, sections. Okay, so this is how we create our survey, yeah, according to sections. If you want to <coughs> separate according to section, but it's not possible to shuffle uh, questions in two uh, sections. So if you want to shuffle, it's not possible. Yeah, if you have one set of question in section one, one set and so in section two, and you want to shuffle according to the uh, sections, it's not possible at the moment. Yeah. So this is how you create section. So the section you can divide it like this. All right. So I hope that answers the question. Doctor Doni. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Nasrin from Faculty of Medicine. <clears throat> hi, hi. I have two questions. Uh, I joined the class a bit late. I'm sorry about that. Could you please explain at the very beginning uh, when we want to come out with the name and matrix number, how to do that? One thing. And uh, okay. secondly, after we finish this form, create the form, uh, how to see it will be automatically save or we need to save it? Automatically save. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So how to create is, um, okay, let me just, uh, Try a new form here. So go to a new, uh, new form here. Okay, new quiz. Okay, so you can enter in the title of the quiz. Test, okay. Uh, description of test. Okay, for example, the title, uh, title of your uh, uh, test, your quiz, and then the description. Please answer the following questions and all this. Add new, and then click this, 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 this drop down button, section. Okay, so section now becomes personal uh, details. Okay, personal details or maybe personal information, then click and new, click text. So the text that they will enter in here is name. So this is the this one you want to make it required and then add new text metric number and then make it required. So now if you click preview, it'll be something like this. Okay, so you're, you're title of your quiz, description, this one name, and then now you submit because I don't have any other um, questions here. So you, once you build your questions in the next section, so click add new, click next section. So this is section two. Uh, this is where you add all your questions. Okay, so this is how we build um, sections. Yeah. Another thing that I would like to show you also that I missed out earlier is on this part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay, um, you can also create our favorite Likert, Likert uh, scale items, yeah? So how to create a favorite Likert question? Add new, 
there's a drop down, leaked. So when you click leaked, you'll get something like this. Leaked. Okay, so now I'm going to click leaked. So it comes out something like this. Okay, now you can uh, put um, the questions that you want. Okay. Um, you are an expert. Making too many spelling errors. You are an expert in the in the following applications. Okay, so here you can put themes. Here you can put sway, and then maybe add another statement forms. Okay, so here is where we put uh, strongly disagree. Okay, and then here you can see. This is the AI version of um, Microsoft, yeah? So if you notice that I don't have to type now, it comes out automatically here. So I just choose disagree and option three neutral, then option four agree, and then option five strongly finish. So now if I click preview, if I go to the liquid, liquid item that I put here earlier, can you see it comes out like this? You're an expert in the following applications, team sway, so, so you can rate it according to what you like, okay? So this is how we use Likert in forms and how we divide into sections. Okay. Dr. Doni, I have one question. I'm sorry if it is a bit yeah, yeah. out of topic. This is regarding forms again. Um, I, I saw your polls earlier. Can it be, uh, is there an application within this so that it can create a word cloud out of the poll? Or out of the answer? Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, you mean create? You mean create a word yeah, cloud? Word cloud yeah, like oh, sometimes, oh. Uh, you you go into the class, right? You want to uh, get attention from the students. Say this is the second class of a series of a lecture, so you want to tell the students, okay, let's now recall something from the past lecture, and then this application is like the Mentimeter, you know. Previously, I've used Mentimeter, so the student will start. Uh, you know, submitting their response, say, oh, I recall coagulation, for example. So we want to see, uh, it will automatically ge generate a word cloud. So we know what type of uh, terms have made an impact among the students so that, or less impact so that we can focus on that, you know, something like that. Does it have that feature? Uh, at the moment, not possible. Uh, that feature can still be quantified. If it depends on their response, okay, like say, for example, if you have the uh, response version here, right? So once they have already responded, um, let me see this one, maybe this part where they all experiment on it. Okay, there was one of the forms just now that we did there, there was, um, there was an experiment on, can't find it, or oh, this one, I think. Yeah, so 15 responses here. So you can see the responses here. Right. Uh, for example, like this, if you just click more details, then you can see what is the common answers. Right. But to form it into a word club, uh, I don't think it's possible at the moment. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. OK, so if there's any other questions on forms, uh, please feel free to email me once you have already experiment on your own. Yeah. And then maybe you have any other further questions on that. Uh, feel free to experiment. Hey, feel free to email me. Yeah? Okay, now we are going to go into the second section. Okay, yes, now. Sir. Can you ask the last question for this Please. Um, Please. Uh, Just I'm wondering, let's say we are setting our question and suddenly we feel we want to change the priority of question. For example, question eight go to question five. Does it any any function to drag the question and replace that? And one thing, uh, secondly, for example, like me, I joined the class a bit late. I come up with my question set, but I didn't create the section for a student's name and matrix number. How can I put this at the first? Um, did it create a section? You have to create a section, like I showed you earlier, yeah. put the name and the metric number, then create another section on the question. I know. If I haven't done this, uh, so I have to create again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, regarding the order of the questions, okay, um, you can also do so. Okay. Now, if I click this, let's say these questions, yeah. Okay. Maybe this one. This is question number three. 
right? Now, if I want to move it to uh, uh, question number four, this is question number four, this is question number three. So if I want to move this down, it's quite simple. Uh, you see these two arrows here. So I'm just going to click this arrow. Now it becomes question number four. And the question number three now moves up. So you can just swap it according to the arrows here. Okay. Oh, 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 sorry. I didn't share my screen. <laughs> okay, I think this, this is a common thing. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, coming back to that. Huh? Right, so now, for example, this is question number four. Yeah? Question number four, I want to move it. I want to move it to question number three. Yeah? So you don't have to redo the whole thing again. Uh, you can see the arrows here. So there's a uh, top and bottom arrow. So I'm just going to click this arrow. So now you can see it becomes number three. So now I want to make it on top. I want to make it number two. So just click this one. Now it becomes question number two. All right? So you can just move up and down your questions according to this arrows. Okay, or if you want to duplicate this type of question, you feel like I don't want to do the whole thing again, uh, then you want to follow the same format. So you just copy questions, okay, and then you can do another new one here. Okay. All right. So now, um, I hope I have answered. Uh, Ken, uh, uh, Nasreen, you okay? Yeah? yeah, thank you so much. Okay. All right, no problem. If there's any questions on forms, feel free to drop me an email. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Uh, now I like to show you something on how do we collaborate online using Office 365. All right. So this is I. <coughs> this is a, a a word document that I have. Right. I have a word document here. Now um, I have a, a, a an activity to give all of you. So describe what you can see. Right. So now what you can see here. What what do you, what can anyone can share? What can you see? Just something simple. What can you see? You want to unmute the microphone? Or? What what can you see here? Or maybe you're answering in the chat. <laughs> okay, you're answering in the chat. Huh? Okay, referring computer teacher marking. Okay, good. Someone reading. Okay, now. This is a, a sample document. You can do something similar like this in PowerPoint. You can do something similar like this in Excel, right? So now this is my document, my document. I am editing and I can type whatever I want inside here. This is my document. Now I can also invite you to join edit this document at the same time. So while I'm typing, you also can type at the same time, right? So this is how we can do a collaborative classroom using Office 365. So that means now I'm going to write a story here. You as a, uh, 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 you can share this link to other students and other students can also come inside here and write the story with you, right? So how are we going to do it? It's quite simple. How are we going to share this document that everyone can write at the same time? Okay, but the document belongs to you, lah, but they are inside writing at the same time. So those of you who are familiar with Google Docs, for example, uh, where you can share collaborative online. This will be a, a good example. So how are you going to do? Click share. Share. Right, and then you have OneDrive. So all of us belongs to UM, right? So you'll be University Malaya. Click University Malaya. Uh, OneDrive. So just give it a few moments. This one sometimes depends on um, your internet mood. If your mood is good, then it loads faster. Otherwise, you take some time. Yeah, maybe maximum two minutes for it to load. So now it's already loaded. Now you can see that um, you have an option. So click this. Here you have few. <coughs> here you have few options. Specific people, right? So specific people can edit, all right? Or uh, people with existing access, or people in University Malaya with the link. Right, so here people with existing access can uh, edit this or specific people or people in University Malaya. So now, for example, if all the students are having 365, they can come inside here and edit this. So people in University Malaya with the link. So I'm going to put allow editing. All right, and then click apply. So now what is going to happen is copy link. So I'm going to copy this link. So this is the link, yeah, copy link, this link. Now I'm going to go here and share with you this link. So I'm going to go to the chat. 
Okay, I'm going to share with you this link. Okay, bye, Dr. Farida. Um, maybe we'll share a recording with you. Huh? Okay, bye bye. Okay, so um, share with you the link. So I'm going to click this. Okay, so can you all click this link? Click this link and see what happens once you click. Yeah, can you see? Okay, now please start typing something. So now I can see Honey is typing. A very busy room. Okay, who else? Now, how do we monitor? Yeah, how do we monitor students coming in? You can see at the top here. At the top here, you have 17. That means 17 people is working on my document now. Okay, and then these are the names. So if I click this, you can see all these students are now in the same documents, right? So that means all of them are able to collaborate and work on the same document at the same time. Right, so sometimes uh, one of the activities that I will do is uh, perhaps <coughs> perhaps I will perhaps give them a, a picture like this uh, example, a picture. All right, and I will tell them describe what you see in this picture. OK, so now I'm going to give specifically. OK, honey, your uh, uh, phone is blue. OK, so now honey, you have to type your phone color is blue. So can you put a, a, a first sentence, only one sentence? What do you see? So Sheena, your phone color is red. OK, so can you your turn comes after honey? So honey, can you please type something first in the picture here at the bottom? OK, Sheena, you'll be on standby. Your phone color is red and your turn is after um, honey. OK, where's honey? Eh? Honey, are you there? Hey, honey is typing down here, is it? Where's honey? Honey has gone missing. <laughs> okay, Sheena, are you there, Sheena? Sheena, you want to you want to type yes, here I'm, first? You yes, want to I'm start here? Okay, can you start uh, typing? Maybe uh, type something uh, red color phone. Just one simple sentence. Yeah, here. Okay, Sheena here. Okay, good. Red. Huh? Why is it not in red then? Just highlight and then put it in, in red. You have oh, to you change mean it. I have to do it. Or yep, yep, yep. Highlight this, put it in red. Okay, so we can see that others are already changing their color. Eh? Okay, Irene has changed it to blue. So one of the things that uh, we can do inside here, yeah, you can see. Uh, yes, you can see a good feature used for brainstorming. Yes, preparing for class. OK, so someone has edited something here. All right, so uh, at the moment, we can see that there are 20 over students, 23 students working on this document. Yeah, so if you were to do a collaborative activity like this, I would suggest try to limit the number of how many students per document. So maybe you want to create another document. So go to new, create another document here. OK, and then maybe give uh, 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 the same picture or maybe another picture. OK, give another picture here. OK, and do the same thing. Share, OK, with a specific group. So maybe you have groups one. So group one, work on this document. OK, group two, work on this document. So now you can even allocate them. So I'm going to give you maybe 15 minutes for this activity, right? Describe what you see in this picture. So everyone start typing here, right? But for you to differentiate which student has typed what, you can tell to your student. I OK, maybe Sheena, you are going to be red phone. OK, so maybe now who is typing here? Uh, Jega, you are going to be green phone. So this is how I do my lesson so that I can evaluate everyone's contribution. So maybe I give a picture there and I'm going to tell, OK, everyone, you edit that picture now and you are assigned a particular phone. So Sheena, you are going to talk about this picture. So now I can see Sheena is done in red. So now this is green. So I know each person's contribution. So sometimes you get um, students complaining. Uh, oh, my friends are not doing any work. Uh, they call it the free rider, free rider. Uh, well, they, they just write. Uh, nobody does any work, right? So to avoid free rider situations, you can quote them. But I don't encourage up to 20 students okay, to join at the same time. So you can limit them based on this. 
Okay, so how to maybe to limit them? Maybe you can put group one. Okay, so who are the members here? Type all the names here. Okay, and then you share the link. Okay, all the names here. This is your link. Put in the chat. So this one, group two. Okay, put all the names here. Share the chat. So this is where you can monitor um, your activity live. Okay, so you can see how useful it is. Work can be done live collaboratively so you can do any brainstorming activity or any uh, assignments or any forum or any discussion everything can be done live everyone can enter and do it and they can use the full functionality you have okay so this is how we uh, do collaborative work using office 365 how we develop a collaborative classroom okay any questions on this Dr. Doni, I do have uh, two questions here. Please. Uh, this is an excellent, excellent option here, but it's more suitable for life, as you say. Yeah, say yeah. We are doing a voice over presentation, and I would like to include or slot in this collaborative work. Is it still possible, or is a futile effort? That's a voice. Question. Voice over what? PPT, like asynchronous class. Okay. Okay. And so if you want to. Yeah. Uh, can you explore this option? Can you see um, at the top here? Okay, mm -hmm. there is some option on dictate and all this. So you can even explore this this for that kind of option. Okay. But uh, maybe after this, I will also suggest I will have a better application for you on, on that. So maybe um, as part of this uh, today's workshop, I will share with you the application. Um, that will be more better for you. Thank you. The second question is now that you have shown just a single document, I was thinking, if it is a folder, can it still be shared like Dropbox? In OneDrive, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. in OneDrive can. Put it into OneDrive. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, so I think we are done with uh, building a collaborative classroom. Yeah. So this functionality is also available in, in Word. Yeah. So now in Word, if I share my link here, <coughs> if I share my link, same thing, eh? same how I, uh, I shared with Word just now. So I share the link here. You will be able to come into this PowerPoint presentation. Excel is also the same, right? So you can try to use this application as part of your classroom. OK, so now you can see I can even see who is commented. <laughs> so chaotic, eh? there's, a, there's, a, there's a comment here. So, <laughs> so because why there's 20 over people uh, joining the document at the same time. So try to limit it lah, so that you can keep track. It's not so havoc after all. One of the things that I like to do uh, as part of this uh, is uh, I like to do tables, you know, because sometimes uh, uh, there's a formatting error and people run all over the place. Uh, so I like to do tables. So example, I put insert, I put tables. OK, so I put name. And answer. So now this is their table, so you can build it. So that means this is their name and this is their answer. So that means they cannot no need to type anywhere else. They just have to type their name here. So Donnie, OK, and then Donnie, OK, and then this is my answer. See, so this is very disciplined. Lah. Uh, because some students are uh, sometimes they go all over, they go at the bottom there, they suddenly from one page become 100 pages and they are answering at the 100 page, right? So to, to make sure that there's some discipline and order, you can create a table. Then tell them, no need to go anywhere else. This is your table, just answer within your table. Okay, don't go anywhere else. Okay. All right. So this is about Office 365, um, collaboration using Office 365. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this takes a little bit. Now we come to the exciting part. OK, so I will. OK, this one I already showed you an eh? example of ranking question. Yeah, um, so you can rank. Eh? You can rank your question from top to the bottom. And then once they answer, Microsoft Forms will tell you yeah, uh, which is the right answer and the wrong. Eh? So which one they have ranked correctly. All right. I've also uh, have a YouTube <coughs> uh, a YouTube video here of uh, all that I've showed you in Microsoft Forms. OK, step one to step eight. Yeah, uh, this is not my YouTube channel. Uh, this is directly under Microsoft, right? So uh, perhaps if you can't really grasp uh, what I'm showing you and you would like to review other trainers, um, you can follow this YouTube link. OK, or maybe just as a revision, you can review this uh, YouTube link. OK. So we just covered Office 365. 
uh, I showed you a Microsoft Word, but it's also applicable in PowerPoint and Excel. All right, so this is some tips, uh, some tips on effective student engagement. Yeah, so I think that uh, for those who are, who are new, these are some tips. Uh, uh, one thing that uh, we we I think we all have learned about online learning. It has to be activities driven. Otherwise, if I don't get you engaged, if I don't ask you have any questions put in the chat, if I don't ask you to come and experiment for yourself, then the chances is um, you might just get turned off and maybe OK, lah, I will view the recording later. Lah. Uh, OK, lah, maybe um, you know I will be doing multitasking. Maybe I do something, I go to Lazada, go to Shopee, buy some barang and all this, I buy some things, but at the same time something interesting or then I come back here. OK, so it has to be activities driven. We give some feedback, have some self assessment. So uh, have some self-directed learning. So for example, flip classroom, you have the video, ask them to answer questions. So they learn from the video and to test what they have learned, you ask them questions and they have to answer. Okay, and you have some materials that is organized. Um, like for example, uh, you, what comes next, what comes next, have some outline. And one thing that I, I like to practice the most is number seven. I get students to write reflection on what they have learned. So I do this in every class and it's actually part of their assessment. Uh, so a uh, part of their assignment. So they have to write maybe 250 words of their lesson reflection. What they have learned in the class uh, for the three hours. So they have to write. So from there, you can pick up what they like, what they they, they can't understand. So from there, you can uh, you can know uh, whether they have really enjoyed the lesson and whether they have really grabbed the lesson or if there's any other improvement that is needed. So these are some tips here. Yeah? OK, so few applications for you to experiment on. OK, uh, let's go through one by one. Yeah, so the first thing I would like to uh, show you all is this nice application, very simple application, but highly, highly effective. OK, and what application is this? This is called uh, Wheel of Names, Wheel of Names. I will share you the link. Yeah? All my slides has the link here, so don't worry. The link is here. OK, so now let, what is Wheels of Names? So now you can see this is something like Wheel of Names. Huh? So now, uh, like for example, if I can copy all your names here, I go to Participant, OK, Participant, then, hey, why is he not coming? Oh, yeah. So now I can copy, oh, I copy all your names here, and then I'm going to put your names here, OK? Now I'm going to ask, OK, so can anyone uh, answer me? What is the applications that we have learned so far this morning? So I ask everybody quiet. Nobody will give an answer. So all the mics are muted. I also cannot see you. You can see me. OK, you can see me smile. I cannot see you smile. Everyone is very quiet. So what to do? Uh, you can use this wheel of names. So what does wheel of names do? You put all your students name here, right? And then you just click. So for example, this is all your student name. Now you just click. So I just click anywhere. So this thing will turn. La. This thing will turn, 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 turn. OK, and then you will select a name. Ah, so Dia, so Dia, you are chosen to answer. So you see, we have a winner. So you can even remove. So if you don't want Dia to be called again, remove. So Dia's name will be removed. Then you can always spin the wheel again. So this is an application where, uh, you know, the students don't really feel threatened. Like, say, like, oh, you're targeting them, you know. So for example, I see Sheena, very noisy. So every time I call Sheena, 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 Sheena. Uh, then, then the rest all think, wow, then she now also feel, wow, this teacher is always targeting me. Uh, uh, every time I cannot, uh, every time it's about me. Uh? That is very true. <laughs> right? So when you use this application, right, they don't feel threatened. Uh, they feel a bit relaxed. That, yeah, then you can tell them, it's not me asking you to answer the question, it's the computer. So we, we be fair, let the computer pick the name. All right, so this is a very useful application you can try to use for your classroom. Yeah, so I use this and they all like it. And some of my students are teachers themselves. They start to use this in their own classroom, right? So this is about wheel of names. Yeah, now another thing you can try to use is this one. They call it magic hat. Yeah, uh, I have this here. It's very similar to wheel of names. OK, so I have the link here. So let's go to uh, magic hat. OK, so magic hat, what does a magic hat do? OK, let, wait for it. Ah, so you have a hat here, right? So now if you click the gear icon, you can put your student's name here. Or if you don't want to go by names, you can go by numbers. OK, so maybe if you're doing a group work, for example, right? So you want which group to present first. Ah, so you maybe you want it to be random and you don't want them to uh, feel like you're targeting them or something. So maybe group one to maybe group five, right? So click set. So now what are you going to do? 
you just click anywhere, uh, click on the head, and then, ta-da! Okay, so group four gets chosen. So now, group four presents, right? So next one, uh, now you can have an option here. Okay, sorry, set. Okay, group four, right? So once you uh, already click this, you can even, okay, now next one, group five, right? So you can remove. Click remove, the numbers will be removed. So you already set what is the parameter. Another thing you can do, similar to wheel of names, you can also enter your student's name and click set. And then you click on the head, the head will pick the name for you. Okay, very similar concept. Lah. But this app, I always use for numbers to pick on students who wants to, which group, lah, which group to present. All right, so this is on the magic head. So you can try this magic app, it's quite useful and nice. Lah, eh? They also like it. Another one is called random theme generator. Okay, what is this? Let me just go to here. Okay, so sometimes you want um, to, uh, <clears throat> you want to group your students according to groups, right? So now we are in a very unique situation. Why? Uh, because the students are not uh, meeting face to face. So there's a very high chance they don't know each other. Um, because they per perhaps it's the first semester and they have not met, especially new students. Huh? Those who are in second, third semester, it should be no problem, right? <laughs> so Dr. Vinodini said, yeah, oops, uh, student reaction, yeah? this is fun, okay? So uh, maybe like in the new semester, new semester student, first semester, right? They don't know each other, right? So sometimes it's a bit awkward. Ask them, huh? you go and pick your own group, lah. Uh, who is one? And then the new semester, they don't know. They only know you. They don't know each other. They only perhaps see the picture. They don't know, never interact. Yeah? So sometimes it's a bit difficult for them to do group work because they have not met uh, e each other. So I will use this team generator. So how does team generator do? You put all your students name here, all your students name here. OK, and then you divide to how many groups you want. So maybe I want uh, um, six groups, right? Six groups, or maybe seven groups. So. Um, how many students you have, all the students here, divide by six groups. So now when I click rerun, this computer will automatically group the students according to their name and their group. So now here we can see group one, this is the students. Group two, this is the students. Group three, this is the students. Group four, group five, group six. So now you can tell them, okay, so for this class activity, this is the group and this is the name. So now you all have to do the activity according to your groups right so this one i often use it when there's a group activity so every class there's random and i use it with my magic hat so my magic hat i put the numbers so if i have six group then there's six so who's going to present first the hat will determine uh, which group presents first after you have done this so do this first then you use the magic hat okay so it's actually uh, in line uh, is is actually complementing each other all right so i'm just giving you some tips lah uh, is up um, to your creativity, yeah? how you want to do this. Okay, I think there's some questions here. Can we copy all the names one go, like control or function? Yes, can. Uh, Irene, yes, you can do that. Huh? So if you have a name list, just copy. Just copy the whole thing, the name list, and then paste it into that. Uh, you can do it all at one shot. All right. Um, what is this? Making a channel in Microsoft Team. Yes. So Asni, you can even create a channel yeah, uh, in, in Microsoft Teams. Yeah. So Microsoft Teams create a channel. Each channel you can rename group one, group two, group three, group four. So now you, you've already set huh, each group and which student belongs to each group. You already set it that way. Uh, so you were Salim, <laughs> what is the maximum capacity? I actually don't have an answer for that. <laughs> but actually, if you have this one, I think there's quite a lot. I have 41 names here. So I think it can still fit. Let me see if I just take another 41 and maybe I'm just gonna, I'm gonna paste. Uh, uh, this is how we can just copy, uh, just copy all and paste. So now I have um, 82, all right? So now I'm gonna try to make it another more. So it's actually, I think it's uh, 123 and actually you can go, you can go more. Lah. So now I'm already 164. So, <laughs> so it becomes like this, lah. okay? So you can just put, Class size is 65, okay, more than sufficient. Okay, and the sample I'm showing you is 164, okay? So actually, uh, one of the trick that I do, uh, that my students don't know, I actually put double their name, you know, so that the chances is they pay attention, you know. So uh, I don't remove it. So for example, the name, uh, Charles comes out twice. So it becomes like this, you know, so they'll be thinking, well, 
so many uh, so they'll be a bit panic lah because if it's only five students are uh, not nice lah the wheels are uh, become like this you know if it's only five students are uh, then it's like you see it's very boring so i every time i put double triple their name so it becomes really small and makes them a bit tension lah uh, so they'll be focusing okay so this is on um uh, random group generator okay another applications i want to show you is this jam board yeah jam board <coughs> so jam board is actually part of our google platform right so what can jam board do you can collaborate up to 50 people at once you can write and draw you can insert text pictures sticky note shapes and has a laser pointer for teaching so those of you are, are not uh, some of you are not familiar with Jamboard. So what is Jamboard? How to access Jamboard, right? So Jamboard is actually uh, part of our um, uh, UM mail, yeah? Okay, let me, let me just, just a moment, uh, let me just check this. Uh, let me go to, just a moment, uh, I just deactivate the screen sharing. I just want to go to my UM mail and check out the applications, yeah? Mm, ah, yes, okay, let me, let me share. Okay, so I go to this one. All right, so this is our UM mail. Uh, UM mail. So you just have to click the, the Google Apps <coughs> here and then go to Jamboard. This is all the applications. Uh, so Jamboard, click Jamboard. So Jamboard is this application using, is in Google uh, Jamboard. So how do we create a board? Click the plus sign here. New Jam. Click the plus sign. Okay, so when you click the plus sign new jam, so you can see that it comes up like a nice white colored canvas here. Now you can share this with your students. So now I'm going to perhaps uh, put a, a text here. I'm going to put, how are you today? Okay, so it's a question, yeah? So now I can make it big. I can make it big. Maybe I can stretch it like this. Okay, how are you today? So this is my questions, right? And then your students can come inside this Jamboard and answer this question. How are you today, right? So they can use sticky notes. So use a sticky note here. Okay, uh, uh, great. Okay, for example, uh, how are you today? Great. And then they can even change the color, what color they want, so maybe uh, blue color, great. Okay, so now you see, I have an answer called great here. All right then i can even edit and delete or anything so now i'm going to invite you to come into jamboard uh, but you all uh, i will you all have to answer uh, answer for me this question uh. so how i'm going to invite you all click share share okay and then this one okay change link click this is click this one okay so anyone in this group with this link can view so maybe i'm going to put edit so that means you can edit my jam board yeah in wing yeah uh, within university malaya so i'm going to share this link copy link okay and then i'm going to go to your chat now if you face problem your students say i cannot access and all this huh, because maybe they're having problem with a 365 account so you click this click anyone with the link to solve your headache once and for all that means anyone with Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, all can enter. But if you want them to enter through their 365, then Unity Malaya. Okay. So now I'm going to copy link. I'm going to go to your chat. <clears throat> can you join me into the chat now? Yes, Dr. Lee is, is something like Miro. Yeah, Miro is, has a similar function. Okay. So I put in in the chat. Can you come and join me? Okay. So now when <clears throat> your students join, you can see on top here, all your students are joining. See, all the nice faces, all of them are here. So you know there's 13 people. What happened to the rest so far? Only 13. Now. What happened to the rest? Hey, here go 49, but only 13 people. Ah, so now you as the teacher can tell, where is the rest of the student? So now you can give the instruction to your student. How are you today? So can all of you answer? Put a sticky note, <coughs> put a sticky note. How are you today? Ah, see, so now your students are answering. Okay, I feel good. Then you, there's a label, yeah? There's a label beside your name also. I feel good. Okay, then, oh, I'm great, splendid, happy, lovely. Okay, so this is how you can do. See, different, different colors. So your student can put different, different color. Okay, now you can even add image. 
Okay, so if you have any image here in your computer or by URL or you even have it in your Google image, you can even add an image here. Okay, this is one thing also good. Now here you can even have a laser pointer. So now I can even tell to my class. Okay, so now you can see this laser pointer is uh, it's, it's, it's not permanent. Yeah, it's moving out. So now I can tell to the class. Okay, everyone, let's focus on this answer. Can you see? Uh, Everyone, what do you think about this answer? I, somebody going to put a smiley here. Okay, so now you can see. Great, everyone focus. So here is you can use the laser pointer and ask your students to focus. Now, not only that, you can also change. Yeah? You can also change the, the dynamic. So like for example, this one, the smiley, somebody has changed. So you can make it big, you can make it small, you can rotate Okay, anywhere you want. Okay, and then on top of that, you can even draw. So as a teacher, you can even draw. Your students can even draw. OK, so you can want to emphasize on this. For example, you can draw. Now you can see it's a bit crowded, lah, a bit crowded. OK, you can even create new pages. How do we create new page? You click this one. See the arrow here? Create frame. So if I create frame, it becomes a new page. But I can still go back to the previous page here. So you can have example here. Group one, OK, group one, this is your activity. Group two, this is your activity page. Group three, this is your activity page. So if you want more, according to groups, you can create more. So you, you as a teacher, you can easily rotate back. OK, so you can even put, for example, this one, group one. I'm going to put here, OK, this is group one. So this now you already set, right? This is your group name, you already set. So now your Jamboard, group one, this is your page. So give them an instruction. Ask them to work on something. OK, so and here you can even change. You don't want a white background. You can even change, but this is only the, the picture. Lah. Otherwise, you can even upload an image that you want. OK, so maybe you want to put this image looks a little bit nice. OK, so if you see that your student already done so much chunting, chunting, and you don't like this, OK, you can even clear frame ah, gone. Whatever they do is gone. OK, so like this one, if I clear frame is all gone, but don't want lah, I like this. So I'm going to leave it here. OK. So this is how we can do. Then you can also erase. OK, you don't like you see it's something they don't think here. You don't like you can even erase. All right. So this is Jamboard. All right. So it's very nice. It's a very interesting tool for you to use it as part of your teaching collaboration. OK. Any questions so far? Everyone is very quiet. Eh? <laughs> any any questions so far? Dr. Doni, I have one question. Yeah, yeah. yeah about this now yeah, yeah. This is a manual word cloud anyway i like it yeah, but, yeah. Uh, what i want to know is that first thing will it all, will all the answer will be automatically safe like for forever until i yeah. delete it yes okay. it will be automatically safe so here you can title your gem so maybe uh, put test test class lah, whatever this one so when you go back to your uh, google if i go back to my gem board here earlier here gem board uh, it will be there. So earlier it was empty, right? So now you see it's here. Ah, and the students also can access via the same link again and yeah. again, right? Yeah, okay. but if you don't want them to access anymore, that means once finished the activity, you don't want them to click anymore, you can do that. So click share, okay? And then here, change. Uh, Dr. Doni, I can't see your screen. You, can you share your screen? I can't see my screen. Can you, can you see, can see, can you see uh, my screen? We can now? see your screen since just now. No? No, no, no. Now, now we can see also. Okay. All right. So now if you want to uh, disable your your sharing, uh, let's say the class activity is over and you don't want the student to disturb this activity, you want to keep it as your portfolio or something. So click share. All right. And then here, see the link, get link, change. Okay. And change this to restricted. That's it. So they cannot do any more. Nothing can be done anymore. Understand. Thank you very much. All right. So this is Jamboard lah. So you all can try and experiment with this, yeah. Uh, okay, coming, coming. Uh, Doctor Elena, coming. What is this? We do not need to download. No, no need. Um, this uh, links all no need to download. Yeah. Uh, these applications um, that I'm showing so far, uh, no need to download. Okay. Now, next one I'm going to show you is Microsoft Whiteboard. Uh, Microsoft Whiteboard, 
<clears throat> what is the difference between whiteboard and jam? Okay, one thing about Microsoft whiteboard is, uh, okay, let me show you first. Lah. Microsoft whiteboard is integrated with Teams. Okay, so almost similar function to Jamboard, but you have additional thing you can do. Okay, so what is Microsoft whiteboard and how to activate it? Okay, first of all, I am sharing my screen. So now I need to go to whiteboard. Okay. Mm, can you see my... Okay, wait, I is loading. Are these... Are uh, all these real-time creative have only become alive if we are teaching, like we are doing now in this session? What if I'm teaching? Can! Rosina, you can also use... If you are using Google Meet, you can also use the application. No problem. Okay? All right. So now, uh, this is Microsoft Whiteboard. Can you all see my Microsoft Whiteboard? Yes. Can, huh? Yes. Okay. So yes. what is so nice about Microsoft Whiteboard is um, here you have different color pens, right? Different color pens. So you can draw different, different color. Okay, so green, you got red and all that. Then if you, you want to erase, you can erase. So you can even put a text here. All right. But this is a small screen. Lah. Now I want to make it big. So if I want to make it big, I'm going to click this, this app, and then I'm going to put open the app. Open the app. So now if I open the app, okay, it's opening, we are opening your whiteboard. Okay, are you all able to see my whiteboard? No. Okay, now when you click the open the app, you are not able to see. So what I'm going to do, I am okay. going to share okay. my screen. Sorry, wait, you or click to open the app? Yeah, click to open. Where, where do you click? Um, where do you? Okay, just a moment. Huh? Just a moment. Huh? Can you see this is the whiteboard just now? Yes. Okay, wait. Just a moment. Let me just close this again. I'm going to share again. Okay, this is the whiteboard. Okay, wait. Huh? It's loading. Okay, can you see there's a small button beside the gear? Um, Dr. Danny, we... Okay, the share screen, is it? No, whiteboard. Because we, no, no, I mean, I mean, because we can't see anything uh, except the whiteboard itself. Ayo. Okay, okay, never mind, never mind. Don't worry. Uh, let me solve your problem. Uh. Hold on. Uh. <laughs> okay, just a moment. Uh. Let me try to do some magic here. Okay, here. So if we go to work, this is how we look like, right? Everyone looks like here, right? So mm. this is how I look like when I share. So you have to click this icon here. Okay. And then it will come out a box or come out at the bottom. How does the box looks like? It looks something like this. Okay, just a moment. Huh? Let me screenshot for you. Okay, Vida, I'm coming back online. Huh? Hold on. Huh? Sometimes students get very tension. The teacher suddenly go missing. Okay, so now you click the share screen here. You will see the uh, box appear here, right? So this box, you click Microsoft Whiteboard. Here is part of your Microsoft Teams. So once you play Microsoft Whiteboard, you will get this function here. So your students will be able to see this. So you as a teacher, you can use all these tools and all this you can draw. Now you can make it bigger. You can make it bigger. How do you do that? You click this one. Click this uh, small button. See beside the gear, click this small button here. Click the small button. You will come up with an uh, option such as this. Okay, just a moment. Huh? Let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to print screen. I'm going to go here. Okay, let me go back and share my screen. Okay, so you're going to, once you click this small button here, uh, this button here, you're going to get this box. So I'm going to click open the app. Open the app. So when you open the app, you're going to come to a screen where your students cannot see, like just now. You can't see my whiteboard, right? So now when you click, the app. Okay, just a moment. Huh? So you have to understand, yeah, when you click uh, the whiteboard app, right, um, it will go to a separate application. So this disables your screen sharing. Like now you cannot see my screen sharing, right? So you don't know what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do now, I need to share my screen. So I'm going to go share my screen. Okay, now can you see my whiteboard? Yes. 
right? Okay, this is the bigger version of Microsoft Teams, right? This is the bigger version. So now you can even write. So maybe uh, something similar to what we have done just now. So maybe how are you today? Okay, so now you can resize this. You can resize this and then uh, make it make it big like this, for example. Okay, how are you today? All right. And then here you can even your students are uh, when they have commented on this, so you can make it like this big. So now if they've commented on this, your students can even go and like the comments, you see, they can even like. Okay, so this is one thing that uh, Jamboard doesn't have. Right, so how are you today? Same function as Jamboard, they can put all the sticky notes that they want and all this. All right, now you can even add image here. All right, now another thing you can do inside here that Jamboard cannot do is you can add a PDF. So if you click the PDF, uh, you add a plus menu here. Okay, and then you go to PDF. So there are many other things uh, you can add, but the one thing that I like to do in my class, I can put my PowerPoint here, I can even put a PDF. So now for example, PDF. Okay, now let me go and find a PDF. Yeah, where is this? Okay, I go and find a PDF. Ah, it, sorry, not PDF. Hey, yeah, I don't know where the PDF is. Lah. Okay, but uh, you can find. Okay, lah, never mind, lah. let me try to get this. Lah. Okay, this is a PDF. Ah, okay, nice. So I insert a selected. Okay, so you see now the PDF is already inserted inside. Okay, so now you can even put side by side like this and ask your student. Discuss on discuss on the methodology of this article. So now you can even put an instruction here and your, your students can discuss on the methodology of this article. So you can even ask them to put their answers here. So if they don't want sticky note, they can even just simply type. They can just type. So put an A here, they can type their names, all their names here. So A, sorry, type their answers. So here you can see it's nice. You have the PDF, you can discuss, everything is here. So if you run out of space, all you got to do is just zoom out, zoom out, use your mouse and zoom out. So you can see it's a very big whiteboard. You can go anywhere you want, anywhere in the universe you can go. See your, your things are here, but you can go here and start a new one, start a new one. So anywhere here you can discuss. It's a very, very big whiteboard, right? And then if you want to zoom in, you can zoom in. And then here you can use all the tools. So if those of you are maybe teaching mathematics or so, you can use, there's a ruler here and all this. You have all the highlighters. So maybe I want to highlight certain part or maybe this part of the article is uh, very relevant, right? So you can even use all this very useful tool. Now I can even ask, the students to come inside here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click this uh, invite someone. OK, invite someone. So now you can see that I'm going to click this link here, the three dots. Um, create sharing link. So now the link is here. Copy this link. Yeah, I'm going to go to whiteboard and I'm going to put in the chat. Uh, offline sessions, what do you mean, eh, Dr. Vinodini? Offline? Okay, can all of you click this link? Yes. Okay, click this link and then now you can see that your students are assessing one by one. So now you can see they are assessing here one by one. Now you can ask them, okay, can you provide an answer towards this article? So my question is, discuss on the methodology of this article. So maybe all of you, you can either answer using a sticky note or you can even answer using a text. So you can see someone has responded leadership. Okay, and they put in the sticky note here. So all of you are joining here yeah? one by one. All your students are joining. So how to see just click this. You can see ah, who is active, who is following the class. All their names is here. Huh? Those who don't have here, that means they are not following the class. Ah, so everyone is here. How the difference is active. Huh? See the difference active, active, active. OK, and then there's some names here invited, invited, but they are not active. That means they haven't joined the board yet. OK, active. So this is how we do it.
Dr. Doni, when I tried joining just now, right, it is asking me to download the app. Is it is it correct? You can try to download the app also. Okay. Um, if it's yeah. asking you to download the app, then you can try to download. But usually they don't, lah. Usually you don't, uh, because it's linked to my my bot. But it doesn't matter if he asks you to download, then you can just download. It's okay. It's, um, it, it will be in your computer. It's actually this application is actually in your computer. Actually, it's downloaded in your computer. So, uh, oh, I think now I understand what uh, Dr. Vinodini means. Uh, yes, you can do it uh, offline also because the application doesn't need to be part of Teams. You can own it separately. Okay. All right, so this is about Microsoft Whiteboard. So you can see that all of you are, are doing something. So you can even document this, yeah? So if you click this, you can even document. So if, for example, if you don't want the pen or you don't want anything, you can even disable here. So your students can have limited functionality. Now you can even export this, okay? You want to export as an image, okay? You can even save it um, um, for your own uh, portfolio. You can you even post it too. Microsoft Teams, All right? So this is about Microsoft Whiteboard, All right? Any questions on this? Okay, no questions, yeah? Okay, so next one is about Padlet, yeah? About Padlet, all right? So Padlet, those of you who have not tried Padlet, Padlet is actually a very interesting tool, okay? So all you got to do is, uh, um, you first, you have to sign up using a Padlet. Now, ask your students to sign up. So, so go to Padlet and sign up from this Padlet. Okay, for example, here, they have to sign up a Padlet, sign up their account. Once they have uh, signed up the account, <laughs> you see what Padlet, don't forget to drink water. Somehow he understands. Yeah? <laughs> so once you already log into Padlet, okay, you can create a Padlet, make a Padlet. Okay, make a Padlet. So for example, like this, uh, um, I have created a Padlet. So welcome guys and girls. So I usually use Padlet um, as an introduction for my class, right? Because you want to have ice breaking, especially those who are in first semester. You want to get to know your students. You want to have some ice breaking with them. And most uh, importantly, instead of just asking, okay, uh, Dr. Jamie, uh, can you tell me what's your name, where you're from? Uh, why you are, what is your expectations of this course? Then uh, Jamie finished talking. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Lee, your turn. Uh, can you tell? So it's a very boring line introduction. Huh? Sometimes the introduction in the class also is quite boring. So you can use Padlet, yeah, Padlet, and then you can, uh, for example, customize this. Welcome, guys and girls. Take a selfie with a wing and a smile. Introduce yourself. Share with us your expectations of this class. So how do I share this Padlet? Click share. Okay, click share. Okay, and then get a link to clipboard. Hey, no, no, wait, uh, wait, uh, let me just click this. Okay, sorry, uh, click this gear thing. Okay, and then copy to clipboard. This one, uh, copy to clipboard. Now I'm going to go to the chat here and I'm going to put the link here. Okay, so can all of you click that padlet? Click this Padlet and you will come into here. So when you are in this screen, click this plus sign. You see at the bottom here, click this plus sign. Okay, then you can take a selfie with a wing. Okay, see somebody has put here, hello, okay. But you can see the name is written here, anonymous. Yeah? Why is anonymous is because they have not created a Padlet account, right? So the first thing I will encourage all of us is to do Ask your student to sign up for Padlet first, right? Otherwise, when they respond, they will come out their name anonymous. Like you see, Honey, Honey has a Padlet account. So that's why I can see Honey's name here. Okay, the this activity won't be so meaningful if they come out anonymous. You want to know who is posting what. So you can see, hi, hello, and all this. So now you can even post a picture. You can even say, take a selfie with a wing and a smile. Introduce yourself share with us your expectation of this class. So now they can even put uh, a comment. Hi, my name is Liana. OK, and then um, as a student, um, the rest of them, uh, the rest of them, they can like the comment. They can even add a comment. So um, I can even comment here. Hi, 
Liana. Okay. So now you can even add a picture and they can even like this comment. So if I go to here, for example, I can like Liana's one. So you can tell them, okay, there you can see uh, one of our pictures here. One picture has been uploaded. So maybe you put, hi, my name is Vino. Ah, so this is Vino's picture. So you can like. Okay, like it and then you can add comment. So this is usually the introduction, uh, the introduction of the class. Okay, so if you notice, all your names are here. Your names are here is because you have signed up for Padlet. So please ask your student to sign up for the Padlet account. Otherwise, it's going to come out anonymous. You don't want to do a Padlet exercise with anonymous. Uh, otherwise, it goes haywire. If somebody were to say something not nice, you of course, you can delete the Padlet, but it'd be nice to have their name there. Right, and your picture there as well. All right, so this is about Padlet, yeah? So one thing good is you can remember your students, yeah? Let me see, yeah, I have a sample here. Where do I have a sample? Ah, so you see, I've done an activity last time. I can't remember which one. Ah, yeah, this one is for UCSI. So I did this for UCSI, yeah? UCSI University. So you can see they put their, their picture there. Hello, so you see there's a picture here. Right. Hi, I'm Ayn. So there's a picture. So one thing good about uh, Padlet is you can remember your students, right? So in case next time you want to see, uh, because now all you see here is all just uh, towns, right? You can't really see their face, uh, their picture. So when you use Padlet, for example, you, you see their face, you know their name, so you uh, kind of build a repo. You know how your student looks like, even though you're virtually online. So Padlet can be a very great ice breaking exercise for your class as well as you can do it for group discussion. So you can have group one, okay, this Padlet. Okay, group two, this Padlet. Group three, this Padlet. So you can give an instruction and you can give a title for your exercise. So they all can use Padlet. So I, most of the time, I use Padlet for my um, class ice breaking. Okay, any questions on Padlet? You can also ask them to write their names as titles and write the dates as an option. Yes, okay. Ah uh, yes, uh, we, uh, there's a limitation. Yeah, only six Padlet for the free version. Okay, if you the, the Padlet only have a limitation, but usually what I do is I delete lah. Uh, I delete the Padlet so it's forever free. <laughs> so you don't have to always have six lah. Uh, you only, uh, if you already reach six, you delete the Padlet. You can create a new one. Okay. Uh, bye, Dr. Salima. Okay, you lock in, uh, Dr. Rosanna, you lock in. Lock in into Padlet, yeah? Lock in into Padlet, then click the link. Then your name should appear. Okay, so that is about Padlet. Okay, I think uh, some of you are already familiar with Kahoot, all right? So um, Kahoot is basically a quiz, yeah? Uh, uh, um, a quiz that uh, this requires two devices, right? So the quiz is online. The students will have to answer based on this. So you have a question. All right, all the student has, the student has to have a mobile phone, yeah? You have to have a mobile phone and they have to answer the Kahoot through this, right? And then what will appear, the answer is going to appear here. In their phone is only going to appear the logo, the triangle and all this. So this is Kahoot. So you can try Kahoot. Um, okay, uh, let me try to set it up, yeah, Kahoot. Let me just show you how this Kahoot works. So maybe all of you, can you try to go to this? Uh, let me put the link here in Kahoot. Okay, can you all click this? Dr. Danny, yeah. I have one issue with my Microsoft team. Uh, I think, um, sorry, is a bit uh, out of this topic, but I have a problem when I'm going to the chat room. Um, I have to scroll down, very difficult to get the link. And when I get to the chat uh, column, I cannot see the share screen here. I have to leave and I come back again. Do you, how, do you know what's the problem happened to my Microsoft team? That's why I cannot attend to none of the link you're sharing now. Uh, do you click the chat icon here? Yeah, yeah. then I click on chat, then I go down, I scroll down, then I will miss all the sharing screen, whatever you're sharing. So I, I maximize, whole screen will be maximized. So to in order to back to the main page, I need to leave and come back again. I don't know why. How okay, it works. okay. No problem, uh, Dr. Nasreen. I will troubleshoot with you on there. Yeah? Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, one of the things that you can do, perhaps you experiment on this. If you see my, my, my mouse, my cursor, I'm going to go at the bottom here. 
you see there's two tiles, right? So perhaps you're talking about this. So when you click the icon at the bottom here, you can go back here. Okay, if it's not this one, then we will experiment on this. Huh? I will talk to yeah, you on yeah. this. After that, this is not the problem. Yeah. Okay, okay. No problem, right. no problem. Okay, let's go to Kahoot. I just show you an example, yeah, how Kahoot is done, yeah. But I need to activate the quiz first. Just a moment. Okay, let's play this quiz. Okay, you all need a you all need a link, yeah. You all need a link. Okay, so this is the code, yeah. Put in the code here. Okay, just a moment. Loading for the game pin. Okay, so this is the code here. So the link that I gave you needs this pin. So please enter in this pin. It will ask you for your name. So just put all the names in. Okay, so you have have your J. Okay, just just a random name lah. Just a name. Okay, Irene Ash Wush. Okay, V. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is how we put. Yeah, you need a game pin. Yeah. So game pin share. So this is all your students online. Okay, I'm going to proceed. Yeah, I'm going to proceed because we are short of time. I'm going to proceed. So we have few students here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click start. Okay, so start. What is going to happen is you're going to have a countdown and you're going to have a question. Okay, what is the capital city of Malaysia? So now in your device, you're only going to see the logo. Okay, it's either the square, the circle, the triangle. The answers is online here. So I can see most already is answering 11, 12. Okay, so you can see there's a countdown. Yeah? So you have 13 people answered correctly. One person answered wrong. So you can tell here who has answered wrong in this one, right? So let's try the next one, yeah? Next one. So you can see the score. The, the question is according to score. The faster you answer, the higher your score as well. Okay, so I'm going to click next. Let's try another question before we move on. Yeah. Okay, what is capital city of Vietnam? Okay, so you can see there's a countdown. Time is counting down. Okay, you have 18 answers, yeah, all together. Okay, now let's see. What's the right answer? Okay, Hanoi. Hanoi is the right answer. Nine people has answered wrongly, yeah. Okay, so now if you click next, you will see there is a scoreboard. Okay, so the faster you answer, the better, it, the faster you answer, the higher your score. So this is on Kahoot, right? So I can't see the answer, the question. So the question, uh, um, Asni, you have to see it online, yeah? The answer will be in your device. Okay, so I will suggest maybe what you have done, you have clicked and the window appears in your laptop, right? So what you can do is, uh, once you share that link, tell to your student that link is for your mobile, for your handphone. So they have to answer using their handphone. So you must have two devices. So they will use their handphone and click that link. So maybe you can share it in WhatsApp. Okay, click that link. The answer will be in their handphone and the question is online. So they see the question online and they answer from their handphone. You need two devices. Okay, clear so far? Okay, got it. Chante. Okay, next one is something very similar. Um, quizzes is also very similar to Kahoot. It's an alternative to Kahoot. Yeah? So you can experiment on this. I give you the link here. All right, and you can enter the code. It's very similar to Kahoot. Um, it's just that it's a different interface. Lah. Uh, you can experiment on this. The next one I want to show you is Add Puzzle. Okay, what is Add Puzzle? Yeah? Add Puzzle is also a very useful activity for Flip Classroom. Let's try what is Add Puzzle. Okay, I'm going to give you this link first. You experiment on it and try first. Yeah? You so big the link. <laughs> okay, so can you just click that link? Okay, let's go and try add puzzle, yeah? Okay, so when you click that link, um, what is going to happen? You're going to see a video like this. 
okay, where there is a video. And what has happened here is you will notice that all these um, points here at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, all these points at the bottom, these are questions that I have for you as a student. So that means as you view the video, when you come to that part, the video will stop and then you have to answer the question, right? And then if you go into Add Puzzle application, you are able to see uh, which student has answered and what is the correct answer. Uh, their names will appear there. For example, let's play. Yeah? If I click play now, so you can see that a video is playing. Yeah? What is research? Okay, and you can see the time here is coming to the bubble. So it's going to stop. Now you see when it stops, it comes a question here. So I'm giving a question to the student. So they have to answer me some question. If they, they, they missed it, they can't answer. And the answer is in the first earlier section. Yeah? So if they cannot answer, they can rewatch again. Rewatch that part again. Okay, so let's say if they already answered whatever answer they have here, they click submit. Now they can continue watching the uh, movie. So click continue. So they can continue watching the video. So you come to the next part, it's going to stop you. So that's where they have to answer again. So this is a very good way. I think one of you asked earlier, um, is there a way to see uh, which student has viewed um, the video and also answer it? Yeah? So this is an additional option. You can see which student has viewed the video. You can also see the responses. And the best part about this is you can pause the application, give them a question for that particular part. So if they cannot answer, it's either they rewatch it OK, or they give you a wrong answer and they can carry on. So this is a very useful tool um, to practice as part of your classroom and also uh, to a certain extent using a flip classroom style. OK, any questions on Edpuzzle? How to create that and all this, I will uh, share with you the YouTube link. Yeah, yeah, yeah need to sign up, Dr. Azni, yes. OK, any other questions on Padlet? Hey, sorry, <laughs> Edpuzzle. OK, let's go on. Now, this is something that uh, uh, I think one of our lecture, I think Dr. Jamie asked um, about recording. Yeah, recording. You can use this application called Flipgrid. Flipgrid, yeah. So what is Flipgrid? I'm going to share with you this. Um, OK, now all of us do this, yeah. What's the limitation on usage? Uh, Dr. Lee, what do you mean, Dr. Lee? Limitation on usage, what do you mean? Huh? Can you please explain? Uh, regarding the Ad Ad puzzle, puzzle. Uh, yeah. is there a limitation like Padlet, you on free version only six. What about Ad puzzle? Mm -hmm. Can I check on that? I'll get back to you on the. I don't have the immediate answer now. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll check for that. Uh, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, um, now on Flipgrid, I'm going to share with you the link. OK, can you please click this link? When you click this link, you will get to a, a window something like this. Yep, something like this. OK, just click this link. You'll be able to see something like this. Now, what is Flipgrid? Flipgrid is something that is very nice. You can put a title. Right, create a video review about today's training in three minutes or less. Be sure to include. Are you now confident and ready to teach creatively online? What did you like best about the training? So now as a as a student, when you access this, you can record a response. So it's like a recording a video, right? So you can talk with your handphone, right? Or with your laptop, you can even record record a response. And it's going to capture here. It's going to capture here. So when you record a response and send it, your name is going to appear here and your picture is going to appear here. So once that is done, anyone who clicks this, they can hear your response. Okay, would you like to try it? Just try. Okay, just try uh, on this. Just a very short video, lah. Just hello or something. Okay. 
Okay, Dr. Vino, I said that. I put in my phone, but I don't know how to, then I sh then it says share, then when it says share, it goes to the WhatsApp or so how to share it. WhatsApp? Yeah, no, no, no. It, when yeah. the record finished, you want to send, it says I'm doing using handphone, it's, it will be share some, I don't know how to send the record. Uh, you click record, record a response, right? So now mm -hmm. you have to sign into uh, an uh, account. Do you have this window here? No, I'm using phone. It's different. The, 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 the platform is different, I think. Can you try using the PC and see? Application itself, right? Yeah. Try and see using the PC. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this. Okay, so far I got zero responses, yeah? Anyone would like to try this? Just <laughs> maybe you all don't want the video to be captured. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, yeah, okay. So Dr. Ashoda said, yeah, we managed to do a two minutes video. Okay, never mind. So once you have already recorded a video, right? Um, you as an instructor, you have to go to your Flipgrip account, for example, like this. So you will see your students who have already recorded. For example, this is their name and all this. Now it will remain hidden, okay, until somebody, uh, until you have make it active. So for example, now here, um, okay, seven, yeah? Okay, I see Dr. Vino has done, Dr. Sheena has done. Okay, so now I'm going to click this and I'm going to put active, all right? And then here I'm going to put active. Right, so this is you as an instructor, yeah, active. So now if you go back here, you will notice there is two responses, right? Because you already created active, right? So now if you click uh, Sheena's one, now you can see you play the video. You can so you can see, okay, so you can see something is being played here, all right? And then here, we know when you click the video, okay, so you will notice something something is being recorded here, all right? So this is how you can record a response. So now if the students has a picture, you can see what is their response and this is the video recording. All right. So this is how we use Flipgrid. Yeah. So now you can even have a recording evaluation. OK, for example, if you I recorded. Yeah, I recorded. Yeah. yeah OK, so thank you. Yeah. So now you can use voice, you can use text, right? And then you can capture your students. So apart from just writing text, you can capture them verbally. So this will be a very good um, um, for teaching and learning uh, to share across verbally what they think. OK, um, uh, and then on top of that is to also share with you as an educator. So one of the things that I do in my class is I ask them to tell me how they feel about the lesson. OK, in a video recording, for example, for that for that class. Yeah? So they record a short video, one, two minutes. OK, uh, class was boring. I didn't like it. I don't understand what you're talking, you're teaching something like uh, or they record a video. And then after the class, I, I just review what is their responses. So rather than just writing a reflection, they reflect. Uh, they give you a verbal interaction. So you can also use this in other ways in your teaching and learning in your classroom. OK, so this is flip grade. OK, and the last one is on classroom screen. Yeah. Now, um, what is classroom screen? If I go to classroom screen, well, already one o'clock. I know we all are very hungry. Uh, just give me another five, ten minutes. I will wrap it up. Yeah, uh, just another extra five, ten minutes. OK, so you go to um, classroom screen. What is classroom screen? This application is very, very nice and very, very good because it helps you uh, to manage your classroom. OK, so now when you launch classroom screen, for example, here you can change the background of this flower. If you don't like, click this background. OK, and you can change to any other background. Maybe I will like this background now. OK, so you can notice that it's uh, is changing the background. Now you see it's a new background here. Now I can even use this random name here. So earlier you can paste all your name, uh, maybe Donnie, okay, then Adams, okay, then maybe Vino, okay, then Sheena, okay, uh, Jamie, okay. So now you uh, you can even choose. So earlier rather than the uh, wheel of names, now you can use this to choose. Okay, so this student, your turn to answer this question now, for example. So you can use this. Now you even have dice. I don't really use this. I am not sure what in what way can we use this, but there's some dice here and um, here you can measure your sound level. 
OK, so if you want to test your microphone, yeah, you can test it this way. Now you can even import media. You can put a YouTube video here. You can put an image here. OK, or you can even use your webcam. All can be in one platform and you can teach them here. Yeah, you can even put a QR code. You can even draw. OK, you want to explain on something here. You can even draw here, right? And then you can even put a text. If you want to type something here, so maybe you have a video here if you're teaching arts. Huh? You have a video here and then maybe there's some lyrics. You want to do some sing along. <laughs> OK, you can even do that. OK, and then you have traffic light. I, I use traffic light in my classroom to indicate that. OK, um, group discussion goes on. OK, green light. OK, but when it's red light, uh, when time is going to be up, yellow. And then red light is when uh, discussion is over. OK, group discussion is over. So I use this. Um, application OK, and also this application when they are allowed to talk, when they are not allowed to talk, you can also use traffic light. There's also timer. You can even set a timer here. So while class is discussing, you can even set a two minutes, 10 minutes timer and uh, play. And then you even have a clock here. OK, so a clock indicating what time it is, right? So this is a very, very nice, uh, useful tool. If you set it up nicely, it will be wonderful and beautiful. OK, so you can even um, experiment on this, yeah. Okay, just a moment, yeah. Let me just share to you how does a uh, 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 that application looks like, yeah. Uh, just a sample to show you, yeah. I need. Okay, let me find where is this. Ah, yeah, it's this one. Okay, let me share to you. So if you set up the classroom screen, you look something like this. So you can put your own. Uh, this is a community project that I'm doing. So I use. Google Classroom, eh, sorry, I use Classroom screen. So this is the title of the project. So you can put the date, you can put a time, you can put, uh, this is random. I've chose which school, you can put the, the how long duration of the presentation. And this is a background, a background with a logo. So if you set it up, it will look something very nice like this, right? So you can put multiple application at the same time using Classroom screen, okay? So this is an application that you want to look and like this lah, huh? you can put many four five application at the same time. So I've given some uh, tips, some consideration in e-learning. You can please look through at your own pace. And also I've given you in the slides this link. Yeah, this link. So if you go to this link is developed by this wonderful educator named Chua Kiman. He is a lecturer in Unimas. So he has actually uh, listed a list of applications you can use for quiz, discussion and content curation. All this has its own links. Yeah, so this is the link to it. You will want to check this out and some video examples of how e-learning models are done. These are some best practices around the world. These are some examples of other e-learning models, All right? So I think I've come uh, to the end of the session. My apologies, I took extra uh, 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, uh, Shiba, yeah, you can um, actually save it. It's not a problem, yeah? You can even save it like this, right? You can even save it. Okay, so I think I've come to the end of the session today. Um, do you all have any questions? Thank you, Dr. Duny. How to get the slides? Uh, no problem. Um, after this, I will share it um, in this chat. Um, oh, okay. this, this Teams thing, uh, it will be in the chat. You is under files, so I will right. share it to all of okay. you. Thank you. OK, so I, uh, I thank you all of you for joining from 10 o'clock until now. I hope the session was beneficial and I wish you all the best. Uh, try to use all the applications. Uh, this is just whatever I demonstrated is just through my experience and um, through uh, my usage. I'm sure you can do much, much better and I'm sure there's many other applications. So I'm just sharing the little that I know um, to all of you so that you have some idea how to create your own content for your own class using the applications that you need. All right. So I think uh, maybe if if it's not too difficult, maybe can we take a group photo um, here? Because uh, all this why I see this is all 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 off. <laughs> so if if you all like, maybe we can take a group photo together and then uh, maybe for edX record as well. Yeah, thank you. I'm seeing your chats here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for also joining and also for the extra time. I know we all are very hungry, but you are still online. You also have classes, have meetings, so many things to do, right? So thank you for joining. Let me try to switch this to a nicer uh, background. 
So in Microsoft Teams, those of you who are not familiar, uh, you can even switch the, the Teams to a different platform, yeah, something like this, right? So it's an auditorium style. So I usually teach my classrooms like this, huh? so you can change the scene. But the one that I like to use is um, this particular one. OK, I'm going to apply now. So this particular screen, so it looks like it's in a lecture hall. So as more students join in, the more it expands. All right, so this is only those who have on their camera can join in online. Yeah, so maybe you like to turn on and then you see that you are already there. All right, so usually the instructor is at the front. Lah. OK. So how about the rest? Maybe come, can we just join in? They have a group photo only if you're comfortable. Lah. No, <laughs> not forcing you all, only if you're comfortable. We have a group photo. OK, then you can see it's expanding. Yeah, so as more uh, of our students join in, the screen will expand and it becomes a really big, uh, um, a, a really big place. OK. Are you all ready? For you all have to turn on the cameras yeah, to join the auditorium. Huh? Otherwise, you can't join the auditorium. OK, are you ready? I'm going to count down. Maybe give me your best smile, yeah? Uh, because, you know, training under edX, we need to have a best smile. If the training is good, that means it's a big white smile. The training is not good, that means it's a very sad smile. <laughs> OK, uh, so all right, so everyone ready, yeah? OK, one, two, three. OK, just a moment, yeah? Let me just capture this. OK, let's try another one, which is a grid mode. All right, so this is another mood, yeah? OK, let's try one more time. One, two, three, smile. OK, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it's been a great pleasure. I wish you all the best. Uh, this is my email. Um, if you would like to get in touch, uh, please do so. I'm putting in my chat, yeah? Um, if you like to get in touch or you like to follow up anything, if you have done things on your own and you find some difficulties, I'm, I'm not an expert technician, um, but I'll try my best to answer your questions as much as possible. OK, so over to you, Umu. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for staying until 1.15. Uh, I believe that Dr. Donny has given a lot to us today, share uh, his experience and skills. I mm, hope it will be beneficial to you. Uh, please do not forget to fill in the feedback form. And we have a lot of this kind of training in the future, so please do join us and do invite your colleagues together too. Uh, and in case that if you yourself have something to share with the academics of UM, do please contact me. We are open to that. You know, um, you might have skills and innovation that others doesn't have that you think might impact them, might beneficial to them. All right. So thank you, everyone. Have a great lunch. OK, thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks, Umu. Thank you. Thank bye. you, Umu. OK, thank you. Bye bye.